Troy McNeese and JSU will take a break. The kickoff from Paul Snow Stadium is coming up next. Your nearby Pompelli Tire Center is having one whale of a sale. Everything in the store is inventory clearance priced. All Cooper tires, any size, on sale. All service work on sale. Oil changes all on sale. Alignments on sale now at Pompelli Tire Center. If you think these guys play rough, think about your vehicle. Summer, spring, winter, fall, your vehicle works hard for you. Bring your car into Don's Car Wash and Quick Lube for the best treatment around. Let the team at Don service your car inside and out. With an oil change, complete wash and wax, and a 15-point check. To make sure your vehicle is in tip-top shape to handle anything that gets in the way. Don's off off car wash and quick lube. The winning team. taking care of the big or the little things in life at Conoco you're good to go want to add some fun to your party come to Subway and pick up a Subway party platter or a six foot party sub they're fresh made and ready to serve your choice of delicious meats and toppings on fresh baked gourmet bread available at Subway Subway eat fresh I'm Philip Tarver for Lake Charles Toyota, where we have great products at great prices backed by great people. Our great products include the all-new reinvented O2 Camry, destined to follow its heritage as the number one selling car in America four years in a row. Our great prices include O2 Corollas with air, automatic, and AM FM cassette for just $13,495. And we have 0% APR. Our great people include NADA certified Toyota trained professionals who can assist you in making the best purchase decision for your wants, needs, and budget. Great products, great prices, and great people at Lake Charles Toyota Highway 14, South of I been thinking about a set of custom wheels? Pompelli Tire Center says come on in now because they're all on sale. All Cooper tires in stock on sale. Belts, hoses, shocks, brakes all on sale. Don't miss this giant store-wide clearance sale at your Cooper Tire dealer. Pompelli Tire Center, Lake Charles and Silver. He picked up a call girl. Hey, baby. But when he gets busted, he'll use her as a hostage. He has a gun on him. Cops, all new at 87 Central tonight on Fox. Your home team, KVHB, Fox 29 News. Football League matchup between JSU and McNeese State brought to you in part by Cooter Brown's Rib Shack. Good ribs, tasty butts. Also, Gold Star Mortgage. For all of your mortgage needs, contact the professionals at Gold Star Mortgage. And by Alpha Insurance. For all your insurance needs, call Alpha. And there you see Paul Snow Stadium and the threatening skies overhead here this afternoon on what is the final week of the 2001 regular season between the JSU Gamecocks and the McNeese State Cowboys. Mickey Shadrick, Joe Pequeno, and Butch Barker down on the sidelines this afternoon. As these two teams get set to uh, do battle, there you see Tommy Tate of McNeese State has been with the program as a player coach since 1975. His overall record so far 15 and 7 in just his second season at McNeese. Meanwhile, for JSU, of course, the Gamecocks led by Jack Crow, a veteran of coaching in the college ranks. Overall record, there you see it, just his second season here at Jacksonville State. His team 9 and 11 so far in his two year tenure. Joe, as we mentioned in the open, a lot at stake here this afternoon. McNeese State clearly playing for. Uh, a, a conference championship this afternoon as we get a look at the weather forecast that we fully expect to be a a factor this afternoon a 90 percent percent chance of showers a lot of rough weather to the west of us and of course for JSU they're playing for a winning season may not sound like much for a team that started off four and one five and one actually through their first six games but they're still kind of in a building process here so this is a big win psychologically for them meanwhile something very tangible at state for McNeese exactly Mickey for McNeese State if they win they clinched their first uh, league title since 1997 and have a great shot at hosting a first round playoff game and as you mentioned for Jacksonville State, a very young team, especially on the offensive side of the ball. So for them, if they can knock off the Cowboys here today, they end the season on a high and come back with great expectations for the following year. There they get a look at Jacksonville State's Stephen Lee, the sophomore kicker from Mobile. 
as McNeese State will receive to start the football game. There you see uh, the two return men standing back deep for the Cowboys. Number 12, B.J. Sams. And on uh, the other side of him, number 17, Barrett King. There's been a good bit of rain over the last 24 hours in the Jacksonville area. So the field, as it is now, even without any additional showers, may already be a, a factor as the game wears on through four quarters. And Mickey, you bring up a good point. We'll see how a sloppy uh, field plays out, especially with two teams that really like to run the football. And Sams elects to bring it out of the end zone from two yards deep. Good coverage downfield for Jacksonville State, hustling down Scott Smith, the sophomore from Cumming, Georgia, making the tackle just short of the 20-yard line. Let's take a look now at your offensive starting lineup, sponsored by Cooter Browns. Up front for the Cowboys, it'll be Roden, Hudler, Gordon, Quinlan, and Davis. Meanwhile, the backs and receivers, Aaron Pierce starts at tailback, Luke Lawton the fullback, Britt Broadhead the wide receiver along with Jermaine Martin, Jeff Hamilton the tight end, and Slade Nagel. Nagel the senior from Lake Charles, Louisiana, the home of course to the Cowboys. First down play, give right up the middle to Pierce, and Pierce plunges out to about the 24-yard line for a gain of close to five yards. I can tell you a lot, Mickey, this offensive line has been battered and bruised most of the year, but they've played exceptional football, especially in this three-week uh, winning streak the Cowboys have put on. They've allowed only one sack in last week against Nickel State. They opened up some monster holes. The Cowboys rushed for nearly 300 yards against the Colonels. Jacksonville State been very susceptible to that as well, giving up a lot of rushing yardage this year, especially in the second half of the season. Second down play, here's the pitch to Pierce, and Pierce runs into a sea of red jerseys at about the 24-yard line, led by number 40, Taylor Mitchell, one of 15 seniors who are playing their final game here at Paul Snow Stadium for JSU. And of course, those seniors want to end their JSU careers on a high note by beating the Cowboys today. Taylor Mitchell been a workhorse for Jacksonville State throughout his career. And he'll be called upon today to have a big game for JSU defensively. It's the third down play, possession play right off the bat here on the first series of the football game. Nagel, three-step drop, passes away and is caught, but taken down short of the first down marker is number 44, Luke Lawton, the fullback, and getting to him in a hurry, Reggie Spencer, the sophomore defensive back out of Birmingham. Reggie Spencer read that play like a book and just laid a vicious lick on Luke Lawton, stopping him short of the first down. JSU setting the tone early with their defense, a defense that has struggled, but in that first possession played very sharp. So three and out to begin the game for McNeese State. Coming in to punt the football will be number 19, David Latta. And as Butch mentioned in our open, the win will be a factor, may play a part in special teams play this afternoon. On the return for JSU, Nico Willis elects to let it hit and roll dead inside the 10-yard line. So uh, a good break for McNeese field position-wise as Jack State starts from inside their own 10-yard line. Just underway from Paul Snow Stadium, back in a moment. It's all about communicating on the job around. There are times when we need faith to guide us. Faith in progressive treatments. Faith in the power of compassion. And an undeniable faith in the future. Faith is a part of everything we do in service. We bring you advanced cancer treatments and faith in medicine. From everyone at Boise Cascade in Dorito, Louisiana, Go Cowboys! A look at Tommy Tate, the head coach for McNeese State, a last season of finalists for the Eddie Robinson Coach of the Year. Nice, nice punt from Latta and a good roll, and JSU starts way back inside their own 10-yard line on their first series of the game. 
first down give is to Carlo James, and he has stood up right at the line of scrimmage. May have got a yard of four progress. A host of defenders there to make the tackle. Let's take a look at Jacuda Brown's offensive starting lineup for the JSU Gamecocks. There you see the uh, the left tackle, Jason Ward, Jeremy Sullivan, as we said, his 41st straight start. Ross the center, also White and Jones on the other side. The backs and receivers, Rondi Rogers, the big spark plug offensively for JSU. Carlo James, the fullback. Jenkins, a little banged up. Also, Bowie will have to step up today. Jake Carlton, the tight end. And Reggie Stancil, the quarterback, leading the team in all-purpose yardage at about 200 yards per game. Here is the pitch to Rondi Rogers. Rogers able to turn the corner, forced out of bounds across the way by Keith Smith from Leesville, Louisiana. Let's take a look now at Jacuda Brown's defensive starting lineup for the Cowboys. Gerald Zeno at one end, Evans and McNutt the tackles, Jim Abram at the other defensive end. Meanwhile, the linebackers a good group. We highlighted Archie in the open, also Garrison and Judge. As Joe mentioned, a lot of talent defensively and also some talent in the secondary. Smith, Williams, Goodley, and Prince. This Cowboy defense comes in. They are first in the league in scoring defense, pass defense, rushing, and total defense. And uh, it's going to be a give and take here against that Jacksonville rushing attack that likes to run the football. Cowboys come in leading the conference in rushing defense, 77 yards per game. And Reggie Stancil running the option on first down, hit by the Cowboys' Joe Judge. But Stancil able to push forward to about the 23-yard line for a gain of three. There you see Joe, the sludge on Reggie's helmet. And I, I fully expect to see a, a good bit of divots here this afternoon because the field has definitely taken some rain over the last 24 hours, and we could have more before the day is done. Team that gets on the board first going to have to feel pretty good about themselves on a day like today. Two tight end sets. Stancil gives to Rogers right up the middle. Eludes one defender and scampers out across to the 25 to the 27. Number 37, Joe Judge once again in on another tackle. Rogers really a workhorse for this Jackson State offense. Comes in, lead the league in rushing offense, 130 yards per game. And of course, as we mentioned, the big guy Sullivan up front getting the job done, making that push for Rogers. Rondi had an outstanding year for JSU. As a matter of fact, after last week, he's now JSU's all-time leading rusher for a single season, breaking Boyce Callahan's mark. Averages, as Joe said, at just, just a little over 130 yards per game. A possession play now for JSU. Third down and about three yards to go. Stancil gets the pass away. Bowie had a shot at it at the 40-yard line, but there was good coverage. Two defenders back there. Sean Williams and Arthur Goodley applied the coverage. And that's one of those catches you got to make early in the game if you're going to knock off a team of McNeese's caliber. Ball gets in his hands, just couldn't make the catch. Bowie's going to have to step up today for Ralph Jenkins, who's battling some injuries. Jenkins definitely JSU's big play receiver, but has an injured ankle, so uh, he... If he does get to play at all, will be very limited in what he can do. So here's Richie Rose, the JSU punter, was the SFL Special Teams Player of the Week after his performance against Troy, which was dynamic, included a 74-yard punt in that Gamecock loss last week. And here is good coverage on the return man for McNeese, B.J. Sams, taken down by JSU's Daryl Prater, who has been a standout special teams player, especially on the JSU punt coverage team this year. Sam's leading the Cowboys in punt return yardage, 12.2 per return. Jack State does a nice job on the coverage there. All right, let's set the JSU defensive lineup, brought to you, by, of course, by Cooter Brown's Rib Shack. Up front, Granville, Hoyt, Gordon, and Mitchell. Meanwhile, the uh, linebackers, a good group, Warren, Gaines, and Dwayne Cuffey. And in the secondary, a much maligned group, it'll be Willis, Green, Coleman, and Blandingburg. On first down, Nagel puts it in the air, and it's incomplete. The intended receiver, Jermaine Martin, and the coverage by JSU's Reggie Spencer. Jermaine Martin is a big key in this Cowboy offense. He's second all-time in receptions, 113 tied with Flip Johnson. He only needs six more receptions to become the Cowboys' all-time leading receiver. McNeese with good field position here, second down and 10. Football just inside their own 39-yard line. Second down, they set up the screen pass. It's intercepted by the big nose guard, Spencer Gordon. And JSU gets the first turnover of the football game, and it comes in McNeese territory. 
bit of time, makes something happen over the middle, and obviously missed his target. Early, early interception for Jacksonville State. As you can see, Nagel dropping back, looking for number 85, Jeff Hamilton, and just a poor throw, and Jacksonville State gets the first turnover of the game in great field position at the Cowboy 40-yard line. Read well by JSU's big nose tackle, Spencer Gordon, 6'6", 310 pounds. Tough to get a middle screen over this big guy. So JSU, let's see if they can take advantage of the turnover. Pitch to Rodgers, and nothing doing at all. Play defended extremely well. First man there was Gerald Zeno, the sophomore from Sulphur, Louisiana. Zeno's a great-looking young player, sophomore, as you mentioned. 42 tackles on the year, three sacks, six tackles for losses. A very young Cowboy defensive line that improves week to week. All right, let's check in with Butch Parker down on the field. Butch? Mickey, just wanted to let you know, Ronnie Rogers, first three carries, looks pretty impressive. His availability, very questionable coming into today's game. He has not practiced in full gear all week long for the Gamecock. Boy, injuries have been a big problem for JSU, especially the second half of the season. Stancil sets up the middle screen to Rodgers. Rodgers breaks a couple of tackles, but cannot elude the grasp of Joe Judge right at the original line of scrimmage at the 40-yard line, which will set up a third and long now for JSU. As I mentioned earlier, Mickey, this Cowboys secondary, open field tacklers, they're awesome. Great coverage down the field. Jacksonville State's going to have to mix the things up to move the ball. Yeah, Joe, you've seen this, uh, obviously being from Lake Charles, you follow the, the Cowboys every week. This, this defense is a, is a stout defensive unit. <laughs> they do it from so many different angles. Defensive coordinator Scott, Scott Stoker brings pressure from different angles, and they can flat out play football. Great tacklers, great coverage guys, they hustle, and uh, when you put a McNeese State jersey on and play defense, there's pride always on the line. Stantel going for Bowie, who lays out, and makes an unbelievable grab at the 10-yard line. The coverage wasn't that bad. Reggie just put that ball where only Bowie could come up with it. Bowie with a fantastic catch. He's got great time. They pick up uh, the block and look at Bowie just stretching out. Great diving catch and it sets him up in great field position. Stancil with a beautiful touch throw and you can't say enough about the catch by Bowie, the junior who's uh, has to play big today for the injured Ralph Jenkins. Bowie from nearby Anniston, Alabama. First down and goal at the 10. Stancil running the option again, fakes the pitch, and Reggie stays on his feet to about the two-yard line, taken down by B.J. McNutt, the junior defensive tackle. Last week against Nickel State, Cowboys showed a couple of chinks in their armor. Nickel State was able to run the option a little bit and throw, so Stancil can do the same. They might be able to move the ball effectively like the Colonels did last week. He reads the option and just finds and picks his way down to the two-yard line. A nice-looking drive for the uh, Gamecocks early in the football game. Second down and goal from the two. Here is the pitch to Rodgers, follows the lead block from Carlo James and is pushed back by Hadley Prince, the strong safety, up at the line of scrimmage. And Rondi actually may have lost a yard. Brad Archie led the way. We talked about Brad Archie earlier. He nipped that straight off the bat. Prince finishes him off and uh, brings an important down up for the Jacksonville State offense. JSU, I think, going to call a timeout to think about it. So we'll step aside for a break as well. It'll be third and goal when we come back to Paul Snow Stadium. If you missed the latest heart-pounding episode of 24, now's your chance to see it. How long have you been playing? 24, an encore presentation, 9 8 Central tonight. Trust the area's senior weather forecaster, Lindsay Storr, for accurate and comprehensive weather information. With severe weather strikes, who are you going to trust? Lindsay Stores, Fox 29 Weather, part of your home team. <laughs> Choosing the right bank can have its ups and downs. Some banks are controlled from out of town. They don't make their own policies or decisions. When you think you have everything worked out, the bottom falls out. But at Cameron State Bank, you're banking with local people who make local decisions. 
People who know your needs and will give you the service you want. Cameron State Bank, the local bank you can count on for personal banking at its best. And we're just past the midway point of the first quarter. No score between McNeese and JSU, but the Gamecocks are threatening. Facing third down and goal from the Cowboy two-yard line. Will the Gamecocks run it or will they put it in the air? Here's the option play. The pitch to Rodgers. Rondi is going to get in for the touchdown. He fought through the tackle of Arthur Goodley, the free safety. And Rondi Rodgers has put the Gamecocks on the board with his 12th touchdown of the year. Arthur Goodley had the opportunity, had him one-on-one -on -one right there. But Rodgers just pulls his way in for his 12th touchdown. Keycock in this Jacksonville State offense, and they jump on the scoreboard first, 7-0. Actually, 6-0 before the PAT. Stephen Lee hopes you're right, and you're, you never know. And uh, the extra point block, so that kind of stuff can really come back to haunt you as JSU cannot convert on the point after attempt. And the score remains 6-0 six, six as we get another look, Joe, at the touchdown. The pitch out. Rodgers, and there is Goodley right there. Has him wrapped up, but Rodgers is pulling his way in. And there you get a look at the scoring drive. The Gamecocks get the, the interception by Spencer Gordon. They march 40 yards in three minutes and six plays. Rondy Rodgers, the three-yard touchdown run. And credit Carlo James, the fullback. An outstanding block against Keith Smith. One corner that really gave Rodgers a chance to go one-on-one -on -one with Goodley and find his way into the end zone. Scary thing about Rodgers, he's only a junior. He has one year to come back and uh, put up some more numbers, and who knows, maybe get an NFL look. Coach Jack Crow has really been frustrated at, at times during the season, seeing his team get off to the great start and struggle on the road, losing four in a row, five of their last six, but they get off to a, a good start today, and who knows, with the potential weather that could come our way from the west, could be a huge advantage. If the rain comes down, it could be, you could see a mud fest running game. So Stephen Lee has it teed up. Back deep for McNeese. Once again, it's Sams and Vic King. First time Lee booted it a couple of yards deep into the end zone. Sams elected to return it. This time a, a high kick. Sams will take it from the 20. And once again on coverage, Scott Smith making the tackle. That's twice he's done that here in the first quarter on the kickoff team, but still pretty good field position for the Cowboys as they will scrimmage first and 10 from just inside their own 34-yard line. And now, Joe, the Cowboys have got to answer the bell here. They find themselves down 6 nothing with seven minutes to play in the first quarter. Well, usually the Cowboys open up with Aaron Pierce at the tailback position, and they do have Pierce in on this drive. But we will see a little bit more of Vic King. Early in the game, we'll see how the Cowboys respond, especially Slade Nagel after that poor interception to give Jack State that great field position. The late handoff to Pierce breaks the tackle of Jermaine Hoyt, gets a good block. Corey Warren has to come over and finish him off at the 41-yard line, but there is a penalty flag at the line of scrimmage. See Pierce, good handoff, reads it, breaks outside. Loads a couple tacklers and barrels his way down to the 42-yard uh, mm -hmm. line. They were going to get a holding call on Robin, the fullback. Had a hold of Marvell Granville's leg. Negates a nice run on for Pierce. And that'll back the Cowboys up to the 26-yard line. Coach Tate sees his team getting off to a tough start here on the road. Down 6-0, now looking at first and 18. And this play goes nowhere. Pierce met by big Jermaine Hoyt, number 75, 6'2", 280 junior from Gadsden, Alabama. And he has had a fine season for JSU from his defensive tackle position. Jacksonville State does a nice job clogging the run here. Pierce. No room to run, and no big to number 75, and number nine just bring him down. 
And there you get a look at JSU defensive coordinator Greg Stewart. Coaches from the sideline. Got to be pleased with the play of his defensive front here early in this game. They swing it out to Pierce, and he can't get much going. Loses his footing at the 24-yard line, coming over to help out on the tackle, number 43, Jonathan Crutcher, a freshman from Huntsville. And Jack State coming out very aggressively defensively here in this first quarter. Definitely right about that, Mickey. You talked about the poor footing of the field. As you see, Pierce loses his balance. And that could play a factor, especially as you mentioned that the rain should hit. Cowboys so far with the poor field position, playing it safe, not really doing too much, but you will see them throw the ball down the field. Expect Jermaine Martin or possibly B.J. Sands for a big play here on third down. Third and 20. Nagel back to throw. Got some pressure from Warren, and he'll go down at the 23-yard line. Corey Warren out of Louisiana, played his high school football in the state of Louisiana, came on a delayed blitz, and it'll be fourth down, and the Cowboys will have to punt from deep in their own territory. Corey Warren. Corey Warren does a nice job stopping Nagel, picks up his third and a half sack of the season. Jack State, defensively, they've been much maligned most of the season, but they're doing a nice job early on. Latta had a 63-yard punt a moment ago. The left footer kicks it high, not quite as deep. And it'll sell out of bounds somewhere around the 40, 41-yard line. So JSU will get pretty good field position on this drive. 4.35 left in our first quarter. The Gamecocks lead the Cowboys of McNeese by a score of 6 to nothing. Folks, can you buy cheaper betting? Yes! Can you buy more expensive betting? Yes! But can you buy quality name brand betting from anyone but Home Furniture and sleep completely free for the next year? No! That's right, folks. When you shop Home Furniture right now, you can pick out all the new betting you need for yourself, for the kids, for your guests, and get it all with no down payment, no interest, no monthly payments to write for the next 12 months. From $44 inner spring mattresses to top-of-the-line pillow top sets, get all your betting sale priced right now at Home Furniture, free for a year. This holiday season, give a gift the whole family will enjoy. A brand new car or truck from the Lake Area's number one volume selling dealer, Billy Navarre. Choose the all new larger Chevy Trailblazer, the best selling midsize sport utility in Lake Charles. Silverado Half Ton, our area's best selling truck. Tahoe or Suburban that outsell all full size sport utilities in the Lake Area. This holiday season, give your family a gift they'll remember for a lifetime and get Chevy's gift of 0% financing on every car and truck extended through the end of the year. Shop Billy Navarre Chevrolet in Lake Charles or Sulphur. Oh, there you see the score, six to nothing late in the first quarter, and Corey Warren over on the sideline making the big sack defensively on third and long. This JSU defense, as we've mentioned several times, Joe, they've had their points where they have really struggled this year, but they have had a heck of a start to this football game. Coming into this game, they were seventh in the conference, allowing over 400 yards of offense with 35 touchdowns, but early on, they're doing the job. Here's the pitch to Rodgers, doing what he does best. Slices his way between the inside the right tackle for a gain of close to six yards at about the 46. Mickey, you have the fortunate opportunity to see him on a week-to-week -week basis. This kid is very impressive. Great acceleration. Picks the holes nicely. Not that big a guy either. It's 5'10", 220, but low center of gravity, so it's yeah. tough to get those guys off their feet. A lot like his backup, Roger Bell, a very similar style runner who we have not seen yet, but we will before the day is done. And once again, we mentioned the problems with Jacksonville State have not been on the offensive side of the ball. They can score points in a variety of ways, passing, running. They do a nice job there. A lot of option here early we're seeing. This time Reggie taken down from behind by Brad Archie after a short gain, just a couple of yards, to set up a third down and about two or three. I think Jacksonville State took a good look at what Nichols State did against the Cowboys last week. Run the option, play action out of the option as well, and they're moving the football very effectively. Third down, a, a long two here. Football just short of midfield. Fake the pitch to Rondy Rogers. Reggie got a lot of room in front of him, and he'll run it himself for the first down as he slides down at the McNeese 47-yard line. Well-designed play, well-executed. 
for JSU. That's a great call. Just let Stancil roll out. He's got McNeese State going one way. He rolls the other way. Wide open field. The great athletic Stancil just takes it himself, gets a big first down, keeps the clock moving, and keeps the momentum on the side of the Gamecocks. They're looking sharp early on, giving McNeese all they can handle in a, a big game that the Cowboys need to win. So JSU converts on third down, first and 10 at the McNeese 47. Gamecocks using up a lot of the first quarter clock in this football game. Double tight end formation, simple give to Rodgers, follows a lead block from his big guard, Jeremy Sullivan, and Rondi gets into the McNeese secondary where he's dragged down from behind by Arthur Goodley. Rondi Rodgers, another first down for the Gamecocks. Mickey, I can tell you right now, Jacksonville State is winning the war up front. They're getting the holes. It's either Stancil or Rodgers. Rodgers in this play just picks the hole, gets outside. Another nice pickup. Cowboys are going to have to make it some uh, adjustments on the defensive front to stop a very surging Jacksonville State offense right now. And the win picking up here at Paul Snow Stadium, which may mean there's something behind that win to the west of us. <laughs> First and ten for JSU. Here's the give to Rodgers, and just taken down by the shoestring by number 58, Ryan Garrison, the linebacker. But Rondy still good positive yardage on first down. Give him about five yards. Gamecocks coach Jack Crow has got to be happy. Jacksonville State's coming out on first down, picking up positive yards, putting them themselves in second and short, and uh, it's a way to move the chains. Jacksonville State love to be able to do this throughout the afternoon. Move the chains and really control the game time of possession wise to keep McNeese's offense on the sidelines. Here is a busted play, but kind of how it's going so far in the first quarter for JSU is Reggie's able to turn a busted play into a gain of about two or three yards. He and Carlo James, the fullback, not on the same page there on second down. Stansel's rushed for 249 yards on the year, so he can do a variety of things. Throw, run, very versatile athlete. Takes nothing and gets positive yards. Pick up a three. Another third down for JSU. Third and two from the Nice 27. McNeese showing blitz, and here they come. Here's the option play. Reggie keeps it himself and will be taken down right at the 25-yard line. The first down marker is just inside the 25, so this will be very close. They spot it right at the 25, and they may have to measure this one. Cowboys did a nice job stringing out the option to the right. They were there. Well, they don't measure. They say it's fourth down. Fourth and about a foot. And Coach Crow keeps the offense on the field. At this point in the season, Mickey, you have nothing to lose. Go for it. You're on your home turf. You got the momentum. You got the lead in the scoreboard. Punch it down and try to demoralize the Cowboys on defense. And with the win, a field goal would not be a high percentage play. Reggie sneaks it himself and looks as though he's going to get a good spot around the 24-yard line, which should be good enough for the first down. No signal yet, but it does appear as though the JSU, the Gamecocks will have it. Now they give the signal. First and 10 at the 24. And boy, the uh, first quarter has gone by in a big hurry. Gamecocks taking advantage of a slate Nagel interception, putting one touchdown on the board. They're back in Cowboy territory again, and Rondy Rogers forward, pushes forward for about four or five yards near the Cowboy 20-yard line, and that will be the final play of our first quarter. And it's been a good one for the homestanding Gamecocks. Jack State on the move. They lead McNeese by a score of six to nothing. Back to Paul Snow Stadium in just a moment.
amazing what a little quality fuel can do. At Conoco, you're good to go. Are you tired of fighting to get the price of a car or truck you're wanting to purchase? You talk to a salesman and he has to go and talk to his manager and he has to talk to somebody else and it's all double talk by the time it gets back to you. You don't have to fight for the price and r, &R Auto Sales, the price is right up front. r, &R Auto Sales doesn't waste your time talking to people you never see. They let you see the price right up front. So when you're ready for a great deal on a late model vehicle, stop in the Southwest Louisiana's number one used car dealer, r, &R Auto Sales, Ryan at Prion Lake. Buy a better car at r, &R. Business Health Partners is the recognized leader for occupational medicine and safety services in Southwest Louisiana. With 45 years of experience, Drs. Jack and Bonnie Drumright can handle all your company's needs. Our field services safety division allows our clients access to testing 24 hours a day and a full line of safety training and consulting services. Call today to find out how Business Health Partners can better service your occupational medicine and safety services. Or stop by our offices at 301 City Service Highway in Sulphur. And as we begin, begin the second quarter, six to nothing, JSU leading McNeese oh, State. Let's check in down on the field with Butch Barker. Well, the wind has really picked up, Mickey, and of course that came into play on Coach Crow's decision to go for it on fourth down. McNeese did not take advantage of the wind in that first quarter. See if JSU can here with the second quarter begins. Second down and six for the Gamecocks. Once again, double tight end, delayed give to Rondy Rogers, and I tell you what, Joe, the yardage is coming easy inside the tackles. Rondy ducks inside the 15-yard line, taken down once again by Arthur Goodley, but Rogers is near another Gamecock first down. Gamecocks are winning the war up front, and uh, they control the clock, controlling the football, running pretty much at will right now. Cowboys look a little stunned early on. But coming into this game, they were only allowing 77 yards per game, which led the conference, and so right now they're kind of reeling it up front. They spot Rondy down at the 15, so it's third and one. Once again, JSU going with a lot of two tight ends, and Stancil sneaks for the first down again. Just got behind his big guard, Jeremy Sullivan. Stuck his head forward. Not a, not a bad play at all with <laughs> big Jeremy. Just get in behind him and follow him to the first down. It's going to be first and goal. What a career for Jeremy Sullivan, as we said in the open, starting his 41st straight game, and it hasn't been easy either. He's been battling some, some nagging injuries here this senior year, and boy, what a big boost it would be for him and these seniors if JSU could pull the upset here on what will be the final game in their careers. First and goal just inside the nine. Red, Rondy Rogers breaks one tackle behind the line of scrimmage, but able to get back to the eight-yard line. That play defended very well by the Cowboys. Sean Williams steps up nicely, and then Hadley Prince finishes him off. Cowboys need more plays like this. Rogers tries to break outside. There's Sean Williams taking him down, followed by Hadley Prince finishes him off. So second and goal from for the Gamecocks. Correction, second down and 11 from the 14. I had him first and goal. They can get a first down inside the five. Here's the pass to Bowie, incomplete. Good coverage by McNeese Keith Smith. The Gamecock fans are, are yelling for a, a pass interference call, but no call as Smith was step for step with Bowie. Keith Smith. Keith Smith read the plays nicely on the quick slant, was right there. Cowboys brought some pressure on that. So third down now for the Gamecocks. This drive in danger of stalling out here inside the 20. Reggie will line up in the shotgun on third and 10. He'll just keep it himself and can't outrun the pursuing Marcus Bates, the sophomore linebacker. Takes Reggie out of bounds just inside the 10-yard line, and that will send on the field goal unit for the Gamecocks. Gamecocks have an opportunity to put another three points on the board with basically a chip shot field goal. Stephen Lee will attempt a 26-yard field goal. Anthony Mayo, the backup freshman quarterback, the holder. And Lee 
kicks a knuckleballer, which he's done a lot this year, but he puts it through there, which is all that counts. It wasn't pretty, Mickey, but it makes it through. And it makes it 9 to nothing. 13.06 to play in our first quarter. Why talk? Because even under the best of conditions, the stock market offers more risk than most of us want to think about. Investing without the necessary research only amplifies the element of risk. We provide our clients with nationally recognized equities research that has been rated among the best of 15 major investment firms. In Lake Charles, call John or Joanne Colligan at 337-439-1500. Raymond James, the research you need before you invest. All of us at Sitco are proud to support our McNeese Cowboys. I'm Al Prebula, and at Sitco, we understand how important teamwork is to get results. Just like the Cowboys, we excel through hard work, dedication, and safety first. Our best wishes to the McNeese Cowboys football team and head coach Tommy Tate for a safe and winning season. Sitco's proud to be a sponsor of the McNeese Cowboys. Sitco's proud of you, McNeese! Go Cowboys! Woo! Woo! And we're back at Paul Snow Stadium, nine to nothing now. The Gamecocks in front of McNeese State early here in the second quarter. And as we take a look at the first quarter statistics, JSU dominating in just about every department. 31 passing yards, McNeese only two rushing yards, JSU 66, McNeese none. Time of possession, look at that, JSU 958, McNeese 502. Of course, the turnover by Slade Nagel, the interception at about the 40-yard line enabled JSU to score the first touchdown of the game, but then the Gamecocks get the field goal here. So nine to nothing, Lee's kickoff will sell out of bounds inside the five yard line. A very impressive first quarter for the Gamecocks. Last game of the season, they have nothing to lose, playing with a lot of heart, and they're out to spoil McNeese State's final game in a possible SLC title berth. And there's the Gamecocks' second scoring drive. Another six-play drive. This one goes 50 yards. The first drive went 40 yards. It's about six and a half minutes, which is what Coach Crow likes to see. Gamecocks getting the time of possession in their favor. But McNeese will start with good field position from their own 35 after Lee's kick sailed out of bounds. And the Pokes really have to start making some things happen. Only two yards of offense in the first quarter. They needed to start moving the football. And we see Vic King in the backfield. Last week against Nickel State, he rushed for 111 yards. Very impressive young, young player. See if he can give the Cowboys a much needed spark. This time it's the fullback on the carry. Walton. And he's taken down by Jimmy Johnson at the 40-yard line after a gain of close to five yards. So it'll be second down and five from the Cowboy 40-yard line. Lawton's a, a very important cog of that Cowboy offense last week against Nickel State. He rushed for 97 yards, just a bulldozing kind of fullback, either blocking or running the football. And here's the give to Martin, trying to get around the outside and cannot do so. The play defended very well by the senior Taylor Mitchell. He strung it out and limited Martin to just a single yard on that play as we get another look at it. Taylor Mitchell comes in with 46 tackles on the year, three and a half sacks and just one hands him and just knocks him out. Jacksonville State really playing some inspired defense right now. Cowboys in a third and four situation. McNeese without a first down, incredibly in this football game so far. They'll need to convert on third and four here. Jack State bringing a lot of men to the line of scrimmage. Nagel to put it in the air, flag on the play, and this one is intercepted. Caught off the deflection by Reggie Spencer, his second pick of the game. It was intended for Jermaine Martin, but there also is a flag back at the 30-yard line. And it's gonna go against McNeese, so the interception will stand. Huge call for Jacksonville State, a great interception, and McNeese State just not getting it done offensively on right the now. Offense. Two men moving at the same time and not resetting. That penalty is declined. Illegal shift against First the down, Cowboys. Obviously, the penalty will be declined, and we'll get another look at the interception for JSU. Nagel trying to reach Martin. Great pressure. Actually, he had plenty of time to throw the ball, and comes out of Martin's hands, and 
And Reggie Spencer with a nice interception. Great athletic play and just, God, gives Gamecocks great field position once again. Martin should have had that one. Second pick of the day for Spencer. First and 10 at the 48-yard line for JSU. Reggie going to go deep for Bowie, who's got a step on the defender, and it's broken up at the last moment. Closing in to bat that one away was Keith Sims, the sophomore corner. Reggie may have waited just a bit too long before he put that ball in the air. But you, you got to like the call by offensive coordinator Willie Slater. Gets the turnover, tries to go for the knockout punch early. Stancil with a nice throw, just great coverage by McNeese. Deep downfield, excellent play to save a touchdown. Stancil, very impressive athletic quarterback. Can do a lot of things, only a junior too. He's about as healthy as he's been since the first part of the season. Reggie doesn't like what he sees, so he calls a timeout before the play. 12.07 left in the second quarter, 9-0 JSU. Leading their SFL counterparts from Lake Charles, Louisiana. JSU's defense, as we mentioned, really struggled at times this season. But here, Joe, you look at a comparison of the numbers between the Cowboys and JSU. The Gamecocks actually lead in most categories except for uh, a couple of those defensive stats. Yeah, especially the big one, total defense, 403 per game. But first quarter, Cowboys can only manage two yards. And so far, Jack State's come up with two interceptions to give um, the offense great field position. Playing inspired football right now and got the home crowd behind them. What more can you say? They are dominating this football game right now. There you see a shot of Greg Stewart, the defensive coordinator for JSU. has seen that defense struggle at times before they are playing well so far in this game. And they're doing it against a very, very potent McNeese offensive attack. Of course, it's a long way to go here, but with threatening weather, JSU got to be happy about the start they've gotten off to, and they've got it second and 10 from the McNeese 47 here on this play. Reggie going to be pressured, gets it away, and the nearest man to it was Carlton, the tight end. And I think no doubt about that, Reggie just getting rid of that football before he took a big loss on the sack. Cowboys come with the safety, blitz Joe Judge around the corner, does a nice job. Judge, one of the veterans of that Cowboys secondary, puts the pressure on and Stansel does the right thing, gets rid of the football, doesn't hurt his team. And lives to see a, a third and 10 instead of a third and 20. Wagner has checked in the game. He'll be in a slot to the left. Bowie split wide left. Reggie in the shotgun. Third and ten. A lot of time. We'll air it out down the far side for Bowie. And just a bit too far. The coverage was outstanding. Two guys over defending. Keith Smith as well as the safety, Arthur Goodley. And it will be fourth down. And Willie Slater's just letting it all hang out. He's doing a little bit of everything. Option, going deep. Jacksonville State just letting it all loose. Last game of the year. They have nothing to lose. Coming at the Cowboys hard, just opening up the playbook. So fourth and ten. Rhodes will try to pin the Cowboys back deep. B.J. Sam standing at his ten-yard line. A high kick. A lot of hang time, and it bounces into the end zone. So it'll be a touchback, and the Cowboys will start first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. McNeese still looking for their first first down of the game. Not to mention, Mickey, they're going to be going into the win, so we'll see how that affects the passing game. And so far, the passing game has not been sharp. Nagel has not been able to really test this JSU secondary, which has given up a lot of big plays this season. But the pressure has been good up front for JSU. First down, here's the give to King, and there's a, an open hole. And King gives his team a spark as he rumbles for about 19 yards to the JSU 39-yard line. Talked a little bit about Vic King. The thing Coach Tate has been saying about the youngster, he's learning the offense 
He's got it down. He's getting better every week. And there he goes. He just picks the hole straight up the middle last week against Nickel State. He rushed for 111 yards. This kid's a dazzling player. Ever since the Cowboys lost Jesse Burton last year against Northwestern State, they haven't run the ball the same since. And I think Vic King gives him that added dimension once again. And, and look at Luke Lawton just go. Nice oh run by the fullback. He ran into a defender at the line of scrimmage, then just cut it outside and gets into JSU territory and another first down. Luke Lawton is a spark for the Cowboys. He's just a dazzling runner. Just gets the ball, a little inside handoff, breaks outside, and he's just a horse. Open field runner, boom. Makes things happen, and, he, and he's a very inspi inspirational kind of football player. Gets the team riled up. Always plays to the crowd. Prototypical fullback, too. Six foot, 236. Very physical runner. So, Joe, after no first downs in the first quarter, McNeese has picked up two in a row here on two plays. And, and if you're a Cowboy fan, you got to be happy because they're doing it up front, setting up huge holes. They go back to King, and look at him go straight up the middle, down to the 30-yard line. Cowboys starting to establish the run. Vic King, the spark off the bench. So three successive first downs on three plays, and McNeese is all the way down the JSU 31-yard line, and here we get another look at the hole for King. No, he just picks the hole nicely and just goes straight up the middle for about a good 10, 15-yard gain. Cowboys are at their best. When they can run the football, it opens up the play action passing. Cowboys can run. That's when their offense is really going. First and 10. Here is the pitch to King. <laughs> Another nice gain on first down. Down to the JSU 21-yard line. Spencer was there to help out on the tackle, but King close to another first down. And Mickey, all of a sudden, the umbrellas are coming out. The rain gear is coming out. Looks like we have storms that could possibly roll in anytime soon. And we're getting a light drizzle here at Paul Snow Stadium. Second down and one. A scrimmage from the JSU 22. Here's Lawton, the fullback, and he's close to the first down. Jermaine Boyd had good penetration along with Dale Gaines. Let's check in now with Butch Barker and see what that weather's doing, Butch. Well, I'm getting wet down here. That's what <laughs> it's doing, and there's some lightning off in the background. You can see the flashes. You can also hear the rumblings from the thunder in the background. It won't be long now, guys, and that weather's about to move in here. And official timeout. They're going to measure. JSU had a good surge on that second and short. Oh, look at that. First down, Cowboys. Just by the nose of the football. And the Pokes really needed this drive. First quarter, they were completely shut out. Put a nice drive together, mostly on the ground. Can slay a little confidence to throw the football a little later on. Vic King, that spark off the bench, the Cowboys need it. And Joe, if the weather that has been forecast all day is about to get here, this is a huge drive for McNeese. Huge drive. Because if it gets sloppy out here, we're not going to see a lot of passes out in this game today. Here is the pitch to King. And look at King's second effort inside the 10 to about the 6. Finally taken down by Marcus Blandingbird, JSU senior defensive back. It's going to be first and goal for the Cowboys. And where's this guy been all game, Joe? I'll tell you what. Um, Cowboys like to start off with Aaron Pierce. He's a senior, but Vic King is coming on so strong the last two, three weeks. As you can see, he just turns the corner, breaks one tackle. Gets by number 22 and takes it down to the six-yard line. Vic King, very impressive in this second quarter for the Cowboys. First and goal from the six. Nagel barking out the signals at the line of scrimmage. Lawton straight up the middle, and the Cowboys have responded with an impressive drive. There is a flag, however, back at the line of scrimmage, so we'll check the penalty and see if the touchdown stands. And they're going to wave it off, so it, it, it will indeed stand as Lawton, the fullback, carries right up the middle for the touchdown. Look at Lawton go, reads the hole, gets his seventh touchdown of the year. He's averaging 5.6 yards a carry. 
does a nice job, puts the Cowboys on the scoreboard. So the extra point attempt. Hits the, the left upright, so JSU had an extra point blocked on their first touchdown, and McNeese can't convert here. Cowboys have had their problems with the kicking game. Charlie Abair was benched in favor of John Marino last week, but at least they get on the touchdown. They get the touchdown from Luke Lawton to make it a three-point ball. at Boise Cascade in Derrida, Louisiana. Go Cowboys! I'm Philip Tarver for Lake Charles Toyota, where we have great products at great prices backed by great people. Our great products include a great lineup of SUVs, from the full-size Sequoia to the popular new Highlander to the rugged 4Runner. Our great prices include full-size Tundra, two-wheel drive V8 four-door automatic, just $22,900, and we have 0% APR available. Our great people include NADA certified Toyota trained professionals who can assist you in making the best purchase decision for your wants, needs, and budget. Great products, great prices, and great people at Lake Charles Toyota, Highway 14, south of I-210. Now there you see the clouds overhead here at Paul Snow Stadium. It is has begun to rain, and what a scoring drive for McNeese. They fall, fell behind nine zip, but they march 80 yards in seven plays, just two and a half minutes off the clock, and Lawton carries it in for the touchdown. The missed extra point, however, by Abair, and the score remains nine to six. They did it all, all up front, Mickey. Just controlled the line of scrimmage. Vic King, Luke Lawton, combination of two, puts them on the scoreboard. And here is Roger Bell on the return. He's done an outstanding job this year on kickoff returns for JSU. The senior from Clay County, Alabama, returns it out to the 34-yard line. The Gamecocks will start first and 10. And the Gamecock offense, which has been very efficient here in this first half, you get the feeling, Joe, they need to kind of answer back because uh, I don't think they want to hand the ball back to uh, King and that uh, <laughs> that McNeese offense after that last display on that drive. No, I think they want to do exactly what they did in the first quarter, control the line of scrimmage, control the clock, give McNeese State as limited amount of opportunities to run that football as possible. First and 10. Here's the give to Rodgers. And Rodgers breaking one tackle behind the line of scrimmage gets a very tough, hard-earned yard out of that point. Yes, Cowboys read that well. Now the officials stop play again. They may be seeing the lightning out over the horizon that Butch Barker was referring to a moment ago because the referee has summoned both head coaches out to the, to the field. So Coach Crow and Coach Tate will come over and I'll have a powwow about what you see right there on our screen. And hopefully the weather will move on because we got a good football game brewing right here. Thunder rumbling. The sky is overhead. Just a light rain at this point, however. Stay up here now. Stay here. <laughs> and everybody dressed accordingly. <laughs> everybody brought their rain gear, even the folks from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Yes. People in Lake Charles, they love their Cowboys, their Warriors. They've gone and watched the, the football team in any kind of weather. Play Jolie Blonde, get the band going. They love their football team. Hoping to see the Cowboys clinch an SFL title here this afternoon, but JSU has showed up, and it's going to be a challenge. Now let's see, the coaches are headed back to the sideline. <laughs> and the Cowboy fans are just fired up that the game looks like will go on, at least for now. Looks as though, Joe, we're kind of on a dividing line here. Doesn't look too bad to the yeah. south of us, but to the north of us, it looks very, very threatening. Yeah, hopefully he'll just find a way to go off to the distance somewhere. Second down and nine for Stancil and the Gamecocks. Reggie in the shotgun. Wind really whipping it up here. Reggie under a lot of pressure. And 
breaks a tackle, still on his feet, and Stancil. Football came out of there at the end of the play. We'll see if he's spotted down or not. Reggie got almost back to the original line of scrimmage, but still no signal from the official. Great athletic ability by Stancil just to avoid the sack. Might you lose a couple yards on the play. See if Jacksonville State, it looks like the players say they have the football. They'd rather lose a couple of yards and lose the football as we get another look at the play. Big rush from the outside by Jerry Evans. He avoids Jimmy Abrams, had him in his grasp. Stancil keeps moving. They finally get him from behind and ball comes loose. State recovers. And look at that Cowboy defense trying to get their fans in, into the ball game. So it'll be third down and 11. McNeese starting to bring some, some different looks against Stancil here. Getting pressure on him. Defense looks a lot better than the how they played in the opening quarter. I think that offensive drive kind of sparked the McNeese defense. Reggie with some time this time goes for Bowie who makes an outstanding grab for the first down at the 46. And I don't know if you can cover any better than Sean Williams did on that play. Bowie just went up high and pulled it down. Sean Williams with great coverage. Stancil fires a dart. Great hands in sloppy conditions. Big first down for Jacksonville State. Keeps the drive alive. Stancil showing a lot of poise. Fires a bullet right there. Great hands by Bowie. That's a sensational catch. He's made two great catches to keep key drives going for the Gamecocks. Filling the shoes of Ralph Jenkins, Reggie's big play threat most of the year who is out due to injury. Here's another option play to the short side of the field and Rodgers has popped out of bounds by McNeese's Hadley Prince. And that play gained very little yardage, maybe two or three yards. Talked to about Bowie a second ago. He's already got two catches for 43 yards, and he's earning every bit of yardage he gets. So they'll spot this right at the midfield stripe. So give Reggie, or Rondi, I should say, four yards, actually. So it'll be second and six. Under seven minutes to play second quarter. Oh, big. Some serious big lightning, lightning there, Mickey. strike right overhead. I'm glad we're inside right now. Here's the give to Rondy Rogers. Nice playing the run up the middle. A, a lot more tough here in the second quarter. But Brandon Shepard, I believe, one of the defenders there to help out on the tackle. It'll be third and three for JSU. Shepard, a transfer for Texas A&M, showed a lot of promise. He's going to be one of those up-and-coming defenders for the Cowboy defense for years to come. Speaking of A&M, a lot of the local folks may not realize this McNeese State team gave A&M all they could handle in week one. Cowboys led most of that game. Couple key interceptions by Slade Nagel really turned the game around for Texas A&M. But you know what? Cowboys almost uh, pulled off the stunner and showed a lot of people that they would be a force in Division I AA. Reggie's second effort reaches out with the football, but they're going to spot him about a half yard short of the first down. They're going to put him down at the 45. He needs to get almost to the 44, so it will be fourth and very short. This is all Reggie Stancil right here. Fakes the inside draw and just powers past Judge, and Sean Williams tries to reach out for the first down just a little short. Now Coach Crow went for it on fourth down earlier in the first quarter. They made it. He'll go for it again here on fourth and a half yard. Got nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. At the McNeese 45. Reggie on the quarterback sneak, and he's going to have it. Somehow, parted through the hole. Oh, actually, the official spotting it at the 44. Looked like Reggie got a bad spot on that play, so this, this may be pretty close. Well, still no signal from the official. Now they give the first down signal. Stancil with the push. Keeps a nice drive going. Gamecocks controlling the clock, answering a great McNeese State drive. And that's crucial. McNeese looks so effective on that previous drive. They can't get the ball back, however, if JSU can continue to put together the first downs. Big, big drive here in this first half for the Gamecocks. First and 10 at the McNeese 44. 
The late give to Rondi, a flag on the play, usually thrown in the area of holding, and Rondi only got a yard on that carry. Preliminary indication, it is against JSU. And this will back the game cocks up. Illegal motion. Legal motion on Jacksonville. It's a five-yard five penalty. penalty from the previous spot. The Gamecocks back at Remains the 49-yard line. It'll be first and 15. Mickey Jack State comes into this game five and five, two and three in the SLC. But as you and I talked before the telecast, if they didn't lose that heartbreaking loss to SFA early in the season, this could be an entirely different mm. football game with probably more on the line for the Gamecocks. When before this game was postponed due to the September 11th terrorist attacks, there was a lot of talk around the JSU area that could have been one of the biggest games JSU would have hosted in a long time had Demi McNeese came into the game undefeated. Of course, it did not work out that way. And here's a big interception by Keith Smith on the trick play for JSU. Was not executed well at all as Smith is there to get the pick and the Cowboys come up with their first turnover of the football game. Big play by Keith Smith. Little trickery here. Rogers looking. Ball just underthrown, and Smith is just right there. It looked like Stancil never got deep enough downfield to make that play develop as well. Smith was there for the key interception. Cowboys in great field position. Now the officials have suspended play due to lightning at the 4.08 mark of the second quarter. So both teams will head into their respective locker rooms with 4.08 to play before halftime, a 9-6 lead for JSU. So hopefully this delay will, will not be a very long one. But unfortunately for the teams, the coaches, and for the fans, and for you at home, we're going to have to wait a while before we can resume play here from Paul Snow Stadium. And right now, with the delay, it's a negative for Jacksonville State. They're driving the football. They have the momentum. Stop play. Maybe gives McNeese time to regroup a little bit defensively. All right, well, we'll keep an eye on things here at Paul Snow Stadium, obviously. But for the moment, we will have to step aside and let our local stations resume programming. And, and then we'll, we, we will return, hopefully, in a short amount of time to continue with our game here from Paul Snow Stadium. Once again, the Gamecocks lead McNeese late in the second quarter by a score of 9-6. to six. Up. When was the last time you... You know, wholesome grains for energy and a shiny coat. Real beef for protein. And welcome back to Paul Snow Stadium here on the campus of Jacksonville State University as we continue late in the second quarter as the Gamecocks of Jacksonville State lead the McNeese State Cowboys by a score of 9-6. to six. Three minutes, 22 seconds and counting left here in the second quarter. McNeese with the football and they've got it first and 10 at the JSU 31. A long weather delay due to lightning and heavy rain and we are getting back underway here at Paul Snow Stadium. Now this is Lawton, the fullback with the carry. Look at him just move the pile. Just carrying Gamecock defenders all the way down to the 20-yard line. The momentum was on the side of the Cowboys when we had the severe weather hit 
late in the second quarter a couple of hours ago, and it looks as though the Cowboys have come right back out with that same momentum. So first and 10 after an 11-yard pickup by the fullback, Luke Lawton. First and 10, here is the pitch to King, who provided his club with such a big spark in the second quarter, picks up big yardage on first down. So at about second down and two at the 12 yard line after a pickup of eight yards for King. 2.20 and counting left in the second quarter. McNeese threatening to take their first lead of the football game. They fell behind nine to nothing. But they are getting it going here. Marquis Coleman tackles King at the seven yard line. So the Cowboys first and goal inside the eight yard line. The JSU defense played such a solid first quarter. McNeese did not pick up their first first down till in the second quarter. But boy, they are rolling here and they're getting it done on the ground. The rain continues to fall. It is gonna be a sloppy rest of the ball game. King breaks one tackle and is hauled in by Russell Green at about the five yard line where it will be second and goal. Nine to six, a minute and a half. And counting left here in the second quarter. The word we are getting is it will be a very short halftime because of the long rain delay. Second down and goal. Now here is the pitch to King. Cuts it up between the tackles and he is in the end zone. And the few fans who are in the stadium, most of them are on the far side, on the visitor's side, wearing the yellow and white and the blue of McNeese State. Here we get another look at the previous touchdown run. Vic King taking the pitch, cutting it up inside, getting into the end zone for the touchdown. McNeese State getting their first lead of the football game and now early movement by Spencer Gordon. The flag will be thrown before the extra point attempt. It's appeared as though Gordon was guilty of jumping off sides. See if he was drawn off. No, it will be all sides against JSU. By the way, Marino is in to attempt the extra point out of a hold of Matt Gore. And boy, special teams play will be very, very difficult under these conditions. Even if it were to stop raining now, the field is totally, totally saturated. And Marino's kick is no good. He missed it wide left. So the score will remain McNeese State 12, JSU 9, with 1.10 to play in the second quarter. And rejoining me now, Joe Paquino. And Joe, it has been a very, very interesting afternoon here. Started off with a 2 o'clock kickoff, and that this kind of seems like another game now. About, uh, a very lengthy rain delay, a lot of severe weather in the area. At least we're back underway for now. It almost feels like another day. Uh, at halftime when we had the delay, we ran over to another building. I fell down the hill, <laughs> got mud all over me. I am drenched, I am soaked, but football is back underway as the Cowboys have taken a 12 to 9 lead. And aren't you glad you didn't leave? <laughs> it's going to be very interesting to see how this, this field obviously will, will be a mess by the time this night is done. Teams will have to play it, both teams will have to play it very conservatively in the second half. A minute 10 left to play here in the first half, however. Once again, the rain delay came at 4.08 of the second quarter in case you're just joining us. 
when it was 9-6. And here McNeese scores very quickly as we get back into action and they get their first lead of the game. Hats off to both teams playing through these conditions. And hats off to the remainder of the fans that are still here braving the, braving the elements to watch a good football game. We cannot exaggerate how messy it has been. Roger Bell returns it from the five-yard line. And Bell taken down short of the 20-yard line. And not a single member of our crew has a stitch of dry clothing on at this <laughs> point, I can assure now. you. Now. The momentum, Joe mentioned a moment ago, clearly on this side of McNeese before the rain delay. And, I mean, they've come out here after such a long delay, and they are, they are really, really fired up. Well, I think McNeese stayed, maybe the delay, as we talked about, did them good. Made them realize that, you know, this could be their last game of the season if they didn't turn it around. And, obviously, they've come out inspired, playing uh, well on both sides of the ball. Now we'll see what Jacksonville State does. Rondy Rogers up the middle, flag. Rogers lost the football. And let's see if they rule it a fumble. And boy, this will be a huge turnover if it is, because McNeese would still have about a minute to score again before halftime. And obviously, handling the football is going to be very, very difficult here with these conditions. Still waiting on the, the ruling from the officials. Fifty-six seconds left. Did the Cowboys get the football, which looks like they have to put more points on the board. Okay. Waved off the flag, so McNeese will take over after the turnover. First and ten at the JSU 36, and as Joe said, still about 56 seconds to get something done here before halftime, and already McNeese, since the delay, they've come back out, scored a touchdown. They lead by three points, 12 to nine. Nagel bravely waits in the shotgun with some pressure, gets his pass away, and it is dropped. Jermaine Martin had it in his hands, but I'm telling you, it is going to be very, very difficult to do that in these conditions. Sloppy field, sloppy football. It's going to be tough to catch anything right now. Second and ten. Play didn't take but just about six seconds, so 50 seconds left on the clock. Nagel back under center. Here's the handoff to King, who has gone the entire way since relieving Pierce in the second quarter, and he rumbles for about 14 yards and another first down to the 21-yard line. Ever since Vic King has come off the bench, the Cowboys' offense has been an entirely different unit. He got them going with that long drive in the second quarter, continues to run hard here late in the first half. All right, so we've got a timeout on the field. 41 seconds to play before halftime. Mickey, I have a question. Is it still Saturday or are we on Sunday? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it feels like the <laughs> twilight zone here tonight at Paul Snow Stadium. And this is, def this is definitely one for the memory. <laughs> you won't forget this trip to Jasmine yeah. this year, will you? No. Nah. By the way, update King's numbers. Vic King now 11 carries for 138 yards and a touchdown. And my goodness, this kid has turned this football game around himself. And the Cowboy offensive line has really done a good job. We talked about it earlier. The last three weeks, they've only given up um, one sack, only 15 on the year. Last week, huge holes against Nickel State, and they're doing the job up front. Fake to King. Nagel throws over the middle. Sliding attempt. Incomplete, however. And once again, it was Jermaine Martin, the intended receiver, could not hold on at the 14.
Cowboys trying to keep that Jacksonville State secondary honest by mixing it up a little bit. Once again, on two. Second down and 10 from the 21. And Mickey, you almost got to think that Cowboys have got to punch it in with the field conditions. Kicking game is almost useless right now. Nagel gets a screen pass away. King's got it down the sideline. Marquis Coleman will bump him out of bounds at the 14-yard line for a pickup of close to 7-8 yards. So it'll set up third and short. Big King, the workhorse right now, doing it on the ground, doing it through the air, showing his versatility. Rondy Rogers is a great back for Jacksonville State. On the other side, King really making this Cowboy offense go right now. And the clock stopped after the contact out of bounds. 27 seconds. Well, McNeese, if they punch it in here, what a what a huge momentum boost going into halftime. Here's the quick handoff to, uh, to number 12. B.J. Sams turns the corner, touchdown. Sam showing his speed around the corner, and McNeese comes out of the long rain delay full of energy. I mean, they have taken over this football game in the second quarter. They're looking as good in the second quarter as they looked bad in the first quarter. The sophomore out of Mandeville always says, just give me the ball and I will make plays on the end around. Shows his skill, shows his speed, waltzes right into the end zone. And now here's the extra point attempt. This time Hebert will, will try it. Marino missed the previous point after. And nice execution. Bear sticks it in. So with 22 seconds to play in the first half, it is now 19 to 9. McNeese, after being shut out in the first quarter, has come back to put 19 points on the board here in the second quarter to take a 10-point lead. And once again, the offensive line did a great job during that drive, opening up huge holes. Slade Nagel had time to reach Vic King out in the flat. He danced out, made things happen, and then of course Sam's on the end around for the touchdown. And the Cowboys have a lot of weapons. It's, just, it's not just Vic King, Jermaine Martin, B.J. Sams, Britt Broadhead, Luke Lawton. They've showed a lot, of, a lot of versatility on that offense today. Making JSU pay for that Rondy Rogers fumble. Hey, my, my Cali light's still on. Now JSU got to got to wake up here. Going to have their work cut out for them in the second half. McNeese obviously wanting to get this game back underway, playing for the Southland Football League Championship or share of that with Sam Houston. Of course, with, with a win today, they secure the 1AA automatic bid out of the SFL because due to their head-to-head -head victory over Sam Houston just a couple of weeks ago. Southland Conference Commissioner Greg Sankey is here to present that trophy if McNeese State should win it. Roger Bell, nice return, stays on his feet out across the 40-yard line finally will be swarmed under there at the 41 with 18 seconds left in the first half. Now the question is, do you want to throw the ball downfield with a sloppy field and possible, possibly give McNeese State another turnover and a short field to work with? Well, I would fully exclusively here and just settle for a 10-point deficit at halftime. So goes that theory. Stanford going <laughs> to put it in the air, and he's got Wagner at the 43-yard line, but time is not on their side. 12 seconds as they stop the clock to move the chains, and as Joe said, not field goal tries. Uh, not going to be very high percentage here in these conditions. JSU is going to stop the clock, I believe. As we get another look at the Stancil to Wagner completion. Stancil steps up in the pocket. This throws a bullet. Great catch. Great pitch and catch there for the first down. All right, so JSU stopping the clock with 12 seconds to play here in the first half. Obviously, Stephen Lee with a very strong leg, but it's going to be very difficult to kick any, any kicks, especially field goal tries of any distance. It's 
So JSU will break huddle first and 10 from the McNeese 44. From the shotgun, Stancil's pass is incomplete. Skips into the hands of Lorenzo Banks at the 38-yard line, so that'll stop the clock with eight seconds to play in the half. Stancil had time to throw. Ball probably just slipped out of his hands a little bit. Comes up a little short on the pass play. Well, it appears as though the rain has stopped for the moment. It's not going to wood there, Mick. <laughs> but the damage has been done, as you can see on the field. Stancil goes deep for Banks, incomplete. He actually, Banks actually had a step on the defender, but Reggie led him a bit too far. Banks had a step on Arthur Goodley. Just a little too long in the play. Two seconds left. And you get a figure right here, Mickey. They're just going to throw it up and hope for some kind of pass interference near the goal line to give him another play. Barring a defensive penalty. One more shot at the end zone for the Gamecocks. Third and ten. Stancil. The pocket collapsing on him. We'll just air it out toward the end zone and the pass will be intercepted it'll be picked off by arthur goodley and that'll be the final play of the first half so out of the rain delay we play four minutes and eight seconds and mcneese puts two touchdowns on the board in that span of time we do have a flag on the play however illegal man downfield McNeese can decline this, and that will be the end of the first half. We have an eligible man downfield on Jacksonville. Wideout was on the line of scrimmage, therefore he was covered up and went downfield. That penalty is declined. It's halftime. So that will be the end of the first half, 19 to 9. McNeese leading Jacksonville State. And as we mentioned earlier, there will be an abbreviated halftime. Doesn't appear as though either team will go into the locker room. Nah. Right now, pretty much a tale of two quarters. Jacksonville State dominated the first quarter. Cowboys came back. Courtesy of Vic King running the football, getting them on the scoreboard. A little rain delay, and the Cowboys come out and fire. Two quick touchdowns and go up 19-9. He picked up a call girl, hey, baby. but when he gets busted, he'll use her as a hostage. He has a gun on him. Cops, all new at 87 Central tonight on Fox. Fox 29 News. More local news than you can shake a stick at. Are you tired of fighting to get the price of a car or truck you're wanting to purchase? You talk to a salesman and he has to go and talk to his manager and he has to talk to somebody else and it's all double talk by the time it gets back to you. You don't have to fight for the price and r, &R Auto Sales, the price is right up front. r, &R Auto Sales doesn't waste your time talking to people you never see. They let you see the price right up front. So when you're ready for a great deal on a late model vehicle, stop in the Southwest Louisiana's number one used car dealer, r, &R Auto Sales, Ryan and Prion Lake. Buy a better car at r, &R. Business Health Partners is the recognized leader for occupational medicine and safety services in southwest Louisiana. With 45 years of experience, doctors Jack and Bonnie Drumright can handle all your company's needs. Our field services safety division allows our clients access to testing 24 hours a day and a full line of safety training and consulting services. Call today to find out how Business Health Partners can better service your occupational medicine and safety services. Or stop by our offices at 301 City Service Highway in Sulphur. Golly, 
GG, shucks! Shazam! I'm taking this to Johnny's Peyton body! Dude, it's time to disco down to Johnny's Peyton body. <laughs> Heavy people call my people to call Johnny's paint and body. You've always believed in our quality service. The past five decades have proven that Johnny's hands and always will deliver. Mr. Jones, uh, your car is ready. Whoa! Fox 29 asks you to join us in helping the Volunteer Center's Papa Noel program. This worthwhile cause gives over 580 children a holiday gift pack filled with toys that inspire curiosity. It brings educational tools and spreads the message of volunteerism and the joy of giving back to area youth, the foundation of the Southwest Louisiana Volunteer Program. Call 439-6109 to find out how you can help the Volunteer Center's Papa Noel program and make this a joyous holiday for hundreds of our community's children. And we're back, set to begin the third quarter. Virtually no halftime as they'll tee it right up and we will get the third quarter underway after the long rain delay, the long weather delay, a lot of lightning in the area. Cowboys definitely have the momentum, getting those late scores in the first half to go up 19-9. Now let's see what Jacksonville State can do. And a nice kickoff by Mar Charlie A. On the touchback, we'll start first and 10 from the 20-yard line. JSU needs a big play. They have started the game in such good fashion got the early turnover got the first touchdown of the game led nine to nothing at one point but the second quarter was a nightmare <laughs> for Jacksonville State and a dream for McNeese because the Cowboys finally woke up in that second quarter and they're playing McNeese State type of football now let's see if JSU offensively has an answer because they don't at this point Rondy Rogers bangs his way for a few yards right up the middle took a hard shot from Ryan Garrison I think right now Jacksonville State needs a nice long time consuming drive keep their uh, defense off the field a little bit let them regroup a little bit maybe uh, draw them a little closer on the scoreboard second down and nine for the Gamecocks and Carlo James breaks it open the fullback rumbles across midfield and will be hauled in at the 38 yard line by McNeese Keith Sims the sophomore cornerback who saved a touchdown Huge play for Jacksonville State. They needed a lift and they got it right there. Carlo James doesn't get many carries, but he got one here and he found a huge hole. Huge. One man to beat. And Keith Smith makes the saving tackle. Well, that would have been a touchdown. Speaking of a big play, the Gamecocks get it. First and 10 in the, at the McNeese 38. By the way, JSU 0-11 when trailing at halftime under Coach Crow. So that statistic doesn't bode well for the Gamecocks against the team, the caliber of McNeese State. But they're fighting here on this possession. Rondy Rogers picks up four or five yards to the 32-yard line, taken down by McNeese, Joe Judge. Joe Judge, one of the leading tacklers on that Cowboy defense, always flies around to the football. Second down and four. Rodgers picks up six yards on that carry. Boy, the few folks who have hung on, Joe, making some noise here at Paul Snow Stadium. And they are champions. <laughs> Hats off to them. Oh, Rondy Rogers uh, looked like he was going to find some daylight on the cut, but not going to be able to cut that sharply on this field. Sloppy, very sloppy field right now. If he makes that cut, he probably goes a long way. Reads the block nice, makes the cut, had the hole, not enough traction for him. So it'll be third and four. Most likely four down territory, however, at this point on the field for Coach Crow and his staff.
new fullback also. That's Marcus Mitchell, the true freshman. Here's the option to the short side of the field. The pitch to Rodgers, and Rondi is inside the 20, inside the 10, and he's in for the touchdown. Excellent call. Excellent call. Once again, Jacksonville State look, probably looked at a lot of that game film against Nickel State. The Cowboys played last week. The Cowboys were really hurt on that option attack, and Jacksonville State doing the job. A huge series for the JSU offense to begin the third quarter. Now Stephen Lee on to attempt the extra point. Not only is King for McNeese over 100 yards in the game, but Rod Rondy Rogers is there as well. 19 carries, 110 yards, and his second touchdown of the game. Great balance on the cut as well. And the kick by Lee is no good. Oh. Well, 26 left in the third quarter. The Gamecocks pull back to within four, 19-15. McNeese in the lead. Look at the touchdown as we go to break. From everyone at Boise Cascade in Dorito, Louisiana, Go Cowboys! Let's join the Cooking with Buddy show. It's closeout time, so it's time to kick it up with our hottest ingredients, our rebates, our discounts, and our giant selection. Save thousands with Bolton Ford's closeout prices and 0% financing. Focus, Mustang, Tauruses, Crown Vicks, even trucks and hot-selling SUVs. All with 0% financing. Bolton Ford, where you always get our low price, no matter what. So serve it up, buddy. I call this my souped-up chicken Ford on Bleu, and bam! Truck on 12.26 to play third quarter. Jacksonville State, just what the Gamecocks needed. They marched down, get the touchdown, pull to within four at 19-15. It's a drive they had to have. They marched it down. Rondy Rogers, some great runs. Stancil, great footwork. Good, good offensive execution on that drive. I can't see though what the bobbed up. Go Tell you what, the term calm after the storm did not describe <laughs> this scene now. I mean, what the, the, the scene we had a, an hour or so ago was was just treacherous. Yes. And now it's the rain seems to have pretty much gone away. Just a slight drizzle, I believe, but nothing compared to what we had. No, Virtually no wind in the stadium now either. I guess all we need in this one, Mickey, is a frozen tundra and we're set. <laughs> We would have it all if that happened. Great hustle downfield by Jacksonville State's Matthew Lavender, a freshman from Aliceville, Alabama, making the tackle. Had he not got down there and made that stop, might have been a, a huge return for McNeese. Lavender does the job on special teams. Now let's see what this Jacksonville State defense can do. Cowboys pretty much scored at will the last two drives. They need to come up with a big stop here. Nice, nice hit. hit. Nice hit. Good tackling low. Takes the center gravity out of Great play. Now here are the Cowboys. They have been totally dominant since the second quarter began a few hours ago. <laughs> and now here in the third quarter, let's see what they can do. First and 10. Here's the give to King. King. He breaks it open. Look at him go outside and falls down at the 35. Only the wet field brought him down at the 35-yard line of JSU. And the rain is starting to pick up. <laughs> Look at King, finds the hole, breaks outside, gets by a tackler there. This kid is a player, a serious, serious player. Just ran through the tackle of Marquis Coleman like he wasn't even there. What a performance by number 17, Vic King, since his entrance into the game. Great job by the McNeese offensive line. Really, really controlling the tempo right now. Now Luke Lawton just barrels up the middle for a quick gain of eight. And the rain is indeed coming down a bit harder. Not 
for Andrew Rubin. It'll be second down and one at the 26. This JSU defense resembling the, the defense that had those back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games giving up over 400 yards. And this time it's Green and Cuffey combining on the tackle, stopping King for a short game, but King gets up, gets enough yardage for another McNeese first down. Jacksonville State can hold here, make McNeese try to attempt a field goal. That'd be something good right now, especially with this wet field. Cowboys doing a good job of controlling the clock here. Big thing in a sloppy field like this is just hold on to the football. Yeah. Tight end in motion. Here's the give to Ruben. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage for a very, very short game. I'm sure that both teams made cleat adjustments during the long weather delay. I'll tell you, the defenders are going to have a hard time moving quickly as well because uh, he just can't get any traction. No, none whatsoever. Which is why we'll probably see some of those quick hitters springing for big games. Offensive line cutting down their splits. Just driving off the football. Nagel on the draw to King. Oh, nice tackle upended by Russell Green coming up from his defensive back position to take King off his feet at the 18-yard line. Seems like the Cowboys are content not throwing the football at all, just spreading the field and let King do his job right up the middle. I'm sure when both teams get inside the 30, they're going to be in four-down territory with these conditions. Third and five. Eagle makes the pitch to King. Marky Coleman makes a good play on the corner to bring King down at the 16-yard line, about two or three yards shy of a first down. Great play. One-on-one, -on -one, great open field tackle. So King ran through the tackle of Coleman on a previous possession, but Coleman gets him down there. And Fourth down and three, and the Cowboys are going to try, or line up at least, to attempt a field goal that will be spotted down at the 24, so it will be a 34-yard field goal attempt by Marino, or Bear, I should say. And the kick, plenty of distance, but it's no good. Just very difficult to execute in all phases of that. To, you, first of all, you've got to get a good snap with a wet football. You've got to have the holder get it down right, and then you've got to have the kicker kick with, he's got to get that place foot down without slipping, and then he's got to kick a wet football. <laughs> Aber did all that just to knock it through a little to the left. Jacksonville State takes back over first and 10 at their 20. Score remains 19 to 15, 840 to play in the third. Joe, the rain has come back again. <laughs> and that means we're going to see more grinding power football straight up front. But at least it's the straight down rain. It's not <laughs> swirling and going in different directions as it was an hour or so ago. Rondy Rogers right up the middle for a gain of a couple. Tackle made by Donnie Pitts, a senior linebacker from Baytown, Texas. Donnie Pitts, one of the seniors on that Cowboys squad, trying to get a ring, a league title ring before he leaves McNeese State. That was a focus for the seniors on this Cowboy squad this week. They really talked about back in 98 when they were freshmen and how Nickel State stunned them when they had a chance to win the league title. This game is very important. They want a ring and another shot in the Division I AA playoffs. Well, about a quarter and a half away from getting one if they can hold on here on the road in Jacksonville, Alabama. Second down and nine. Stancil running the option, and the pursuit will take him down behind the line of scrimmage. Nice play defensively. Marcus Bates, linebacker, sophomore out of St. Rose, Louisiana, was there first. Good pursuit. 
Stands to run the option, and Bates just one, hands him, and then the rest of the Cowboys just get right in. So it'll be third and nine for JSU. Not the down you want to be in in these conditions. Looks like Stansel is walking gingerly. Yeah, he's been a warrior this year. Been playing with nagging injuries the entire year. Such a big part of this offense. They set up the screen pass to Rondi Rogers, and Rogers makes a nice run out across the 30, and Rogers is very close to the first down. I think he's got it at the 32. It looked like Rogers, Joe, had no chance to get out of that, but somehow he did. Picked up 11 yards and a first down. Not only does he run with power, but he's very elusive in the open field. Stancil, little touch pass, and look at Rogers. Just avoid tacklers, finds the hole, gets the first down. And the Gamecocks are moving with 6.47 and counting. Huge play there, not to have to punt it back to McNeese from deep in your own territory. First and 10 at the 32. Rondy Rogers stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Number 45 appeared to be the first guy there, Marcus Bates. Rogers trying to run up the middle and hello, Donnie Pitts, the senior. Meets him at the line of scrimmage. Pitts and Bates. That play loses a half yard. It'll be second down and 11 from the 31. Gamecocks taking a lot of time in the huddle. 10 seconds on the play clock. Stancil, play action pass, gets it away, and it's intercepted. It's picked off by Joe Judge. The ball is deflected. Good coverage by Keith Smith against Quincy Bowie, and another Jack State turnover. Great interception by Arthur Goodley off the tip. Cowboys in excellent field position. 35-yard line. Seated here again. Stancil drops back. Tight coverage. And Joe Judge with the interception. But really give that one to Keith Smith. Outstanding coverage on Quincy Bowie. Came over Bowie's shoulder without interfering. Tipped the ball up in the air and Judge was there to make the pick. First and 10, McNeese at the 35-yard line of JSU. And this is Pierce back in the game, and he is taken down from behind by Reggie Spencer, but not before Pierce gains 12 yards and a McNeese first down. Cowboys have a plethora of backs. Aaron Pierce, Vic King, Jacob Prim, Luke Lawton, Andrew Roban, Marcus Trahan. Cowboys never miss a beat with whoever they have running the football for them. And you can tell Pierce has not been in the game in a while. His jersey, you can still tell what number he's wearing. Actually, I think I'm more dirtier than Aaron Pierce is right <laughs> I now. I think you are, Joe. <laughs> you and I both. <laughs> First and 10. This is Lawton. He's been effective tonight, but not on that play. As Taylor Mitchell squeezed down from his defensive end position. Play only gained a couple of yards. Quick moving third quarter here, as you would expect, most both teams staying predominantly with the rushing game. Down to five minutes to play third quarter. McNeese looking for their largest lead of the game. If they put a touchdown on the board here, would be a huge, huge point for the for the Cowboys. Here's Sam's on the handoff. Play stop, however, before it gets going. A flag on the play. I believe it's going to be motioned against the Cowboys. Pro snap. False start on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty. Still second down. Break for Jacksonville State on that one. Cowboys with a second and 13 now. So they spotted back at the 25-yard line. Greg Stewart, defensive coordinator for the Gamecocks, watching his defense struggle here since that first quarter. They looked so dominant 
in the first quarter, but McNeese moving the football now. Here's the swing pass out to Pierce, and Pierce races down the far sideline. Dell Gaines gets to him, but not before. Pierce is inside the 10-yard line, and it'll be first and goal, Cowboys. Very nice, safe play call by Cowboys offensive coordinator Matt Viatortle. Swing pass to Aaron Pierce. Catches Jacksonville State by surprise. Turns the corner, gets inside the 10-yard line. First and goal from right at the 10. Here's the give to King. Oh, he's stuffed at the line of scrimmage. That is number 51, C.J. Boyd from nearby Alexandria, Alabama, making the tackle for virtually no game. Sophomore with a nice hit. And the Gamecocks need a, a stand here in a big way. They've got to hold the Cowboys to at least three points. Thanks, man. Second down and goal. like a lot of tired defenders on that defense for JSU. Here's the pitch to King, and he's taken down at about the six or seven yard line. Dale Gaines had him from behind, had some help from Marquis Coleman. It'll be third and goal. It'll be third and goal from just inside the seven yard line. The Cowboys do throw the football, look for the tight end. They love to find the tight end in this short range. Four receiver formation. Nagel with a little shovel pass. It, it's loose, but it's an incomplete pass. Pierce could not hold on to it. Jermaine Hoyt was there waiting on Pierce, however, so the play probably would not have resulted in much yardage at all. So it'll be fourth and goal from the six. Looking at the play, a little simple toss. Pierce can't hold it. Jackson, Jacksonville defense steps up. Major bending, but no breaking on this possession for JSU, and it'll bring on another field goal attempt from Charlie Abair. It'll be a 24-yard try from the left hash mark and movement on the right side. It's Spencer Gordon jump off sides, or was he pulled off? The penalty cannot result in a first down. It would just make it a little shorter field goal try if it is indeed against JSU. But it may tempt Coach Tate to go for it. Possibly. For a pro snap, offsides, on the defense. The center was reacting to the charge by the defensive man. Half the distance to go, fourth down. So a very thorough description of the happenings on that play. <laughs> and it'll be a half the distance penalty. What do you think, Joe? Coach Tate sending the offense back on the field here. I think Coach Tate wants to go out for the knockout punch right here. Maybe try to draw him off again. Maybe get the first down. Well, they spot it just inside the four, so it'll be fourth and goal from about the three and a half yard line. Looking to the end zone, throws it up, and Lawton catches it. The fullback, not sure he was the intended receiver, number 87. The tight end, Jason Taylor, was also back there. But nonetheless, it results in a touchdown and a huge play for the Cowboys going forward on fourth and goal and getting six. Tommy Tate, very aggressive with the play call. Either Hamilton or Luke Lawton, either one, they're friends, <laughs> they're teammates. They get along, they score the touchdown. And what a big touchdown it is. Huge. Twenty-five fifteen with the extra point try to 
coming up now from Hebert. And Kicking has been an adventure mm. in the last 10 minutes or so. Cannot take anything for granted in the kicking game, even an extra point. Hebert missed this one. You can tell when he goes to plant the left foot, just has no traction at all. 2.53 left in the third quarter. McNeese matches their largest lead of the game. They lead the Gamecocks 25-15. You know, when I go into a bank, a smile and a little common courtesy go a long way. Of course, I also want to know I can get to the bank easily, you know, that they're close by. <laughs> they really ought to bend over backward to suit me. After all, it's my money. Treating you better is what we do best. Cameron State Bank, personal banking at its best. Dodge Dakota offers best-in-class cargo and payload. Woo! What is that? You can put your arms down, you know. That'll be good. Now get seven-year or 100,000-mile powertrain protection and 0% APR on 2002 Dodge Dakota. Golly gee, shucks! Shazam! I'm taking this to Johnny's paint and body! Dude, it's time to just go down to Johnny's paint and body, man. <laughs> Have your people call my people to call Johnny's Paint and Body. You've always believed in our quality service. The past five decades have proven that Johnny's has and always will deliver. Mr. Jones, uh, your car is ready. Whoa! But, you never know, sloppy field, anything can happen still. JSU has clearly been able to move the football. Roger Bell will try to give him a good return. Oh, and he'll slip down at the 17-yard line. By far the worst return for Bell. He was being pursued by Hadley Prince on the kickoff team. So JSU will start this series inside their own 20. Still have a quarter and 2.45 left here. Stancil doesn't have to air it out quite yet. Gamecocks at 5-5, five and five, hoping to upset the Cowboys here at home and finish off the 2001 season with a winning record. But they're going to have to come from behind to do it. Rondy Rogers straight up the heart of the McNeese defense for a gain of three. And right now, history is not on the side of Jacksonville State either. They've lost all five previous matchups to the Cowboys. Cowboys have the lead and they like where they are with their defense on the field. Cowboys ranked 11th in the country in Division I AA. Perennial power in Division I AA every year. Dominated Jacksonville State last year in Lake Charles, but Jack State being much more competitive this year. Rondy Rogers slips down just across the 20, and it'll be third and long coming up for the Gamecocks. Cowboys have lost three football games, and the only game they were really outplayed was the Western Kentucky game. Other than that, SFA game, they had the lead. Unfortunately, Nagel had a bad game through four, three were returned for touchdowns. And the Texas A&M game, they led most of the way, it just fell short at the very end. This is a very good Cowboy football team. Same Texas A&M team that almost, almost gave Texas all they could handle. Exactly. Third down. Stancil makes the pitch to Rodgers, and he has no chance. He was met behind the line of scrimmage. Arthur Goodley was almost in as good a position as Rodgers to take that pitch, and a loss back to the 15-yard line, and JSU will have to punt the football. Arthur Goodley, the new, the new daddy says, who's your daddy? Goodley is the daddy. Good open field tackle. Well, Rhodes will be called upon to punt the football, and that is something he can do very well. Watch out for Sam's here. He's an electric returner. He makes things happen. 
Rhodes needs to get off a good punt. I haven't seen a, seen a punt yet since we've started play after the, after the weather delay, and the long snap on the punts can get kind of tricky as well. Rhodes from his two-yard line gets a good snap. Gets away a low-line drive kick. And a return for Sams. Crosses the 50. And Sams hit by his own man at the 38-yard line. And that is where McNeese will take over first and 10. Excellent field position again for the Cowboys. Got to figure. They put a nice drive together, put some points on, knockout punch. That was a big, big defensive stand by the Cowboys, forcing JSU to punt from deep in their own territory. Now they've got outstanding field position as they start from inside the Gamecock 40. And a crucial series for the JSU defense. Jacob Prim in at the tailback position. He goes straight up the middle. Nice gain of five. Cowboy offensive line is just dominating up front right now. Granville made the tackle at the 35 after a gain of four or five yards. So it'll be second down. We'll call it six. Right now, it's a pretty easy day for quarterback Slade Nagel. All he's got to do is hand off the football and watch his guys do their thing. Not having to do much with his arm here in the second half. Once again, here's the pitch to Prim. Flag on the play as Prim dives inside the 30 to about the 28. Clock is stopped with seven seconds to play in the third quarter. Got some laundry. Looks like he might come back. Two flags, actually. JSU defenders pointing in the direction of McNeese State. Looks like it'll be legal use of the hands against McNeese. Official keeping us in suspense. <laughs> Illegal block in the back above the waist on McNeese. It's a 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It's still second down. Now that'll move them back to the 45 yard line where it'll be second and 16. Only seven seconds remain here in the third quarter. We'll see how the Cowboys play it. That yeah. will, they won't have to run the play. That'll nope. be the end of the third. McNeese leads the Gamecocks by 10 points, 25 to 15. We'll be back with fourth quarter action from Paul Snow Stadium in a moment. All of us at Sitco are proud to support our McNeese Cowboys. I'm Al Prebula, and at Sitco, we understand how important teamwork is to get results. Just like the Cowboys, we excel through hard work, dedication, and safety first. Our best wishes to the McNeese Cowboys football team and head coach Tommy Tate for a safe and winning season. Sitco's proud to be a sponsor of the McNeese Cowboys. Sitco's proud of you, McNeese! Go this holiday season, give a gift the whole family will enjoy. A brand new car or truck from the Lake Area's number one volume selling dealer, Billy Navarre. Choose the all-new larger Chevy Trailblazer, the best-selling midsize sport utility in Lake Charles. Silverado Half Ton, our area's best-selling truck. Tahoe or Suburban that outsell all full-size sport utilities in the Lake Area. This holiday season, give your family a gift they'll remember for a lifetime and get Chevy's gift of 0% financing on every car and truck extended through the end of the year. Shop Billy Navarre Chevrolet in Lake Charles or Sulphur. There are moments when you must rely on faith. Faith in your team. Faith in your God-given ability. Faith in the human spirit. And faith that your life is in the most capable hands. Faith is a part of everything we do. Through our Christian-based mission and commitment to quality service, we bring you the region's top heart care and faith in medicine. From every 
one at Boise Cascade in Derrida, Louisiana. Go Cowboys! Positive yards. Third down, seven yards to go. Nagel dumps it over the middle. He's got Sam. Sam's broke a tackle and gets the first down. Jimmy Johnson makes the stop at the 28-yard line, but that'll be good enough to move the chains for McNeese. Sam's exciting player scored on the end around earlier for a touchdown. Just a little quick slant. Broke through, got the first down, keeps the clock running. And right now I think the Cowboy fans are starting to sniff SLC title. Great cut by Sam's. Rain getting a little harder. And here's the first down give to Prim. Just bulls his way inside the 28-yard line for a gain of close to five yards. They're saying they wanted to be physical up front. They wanted to knock Jacksonville State around. And ever since the first quarter, entirely different team. Slade's getting the signals, and Coach Tate says, hand the ball off, young man. <laughs> Just hand it off. Nothing fancy about, no, about what McNeese is doing here. Just good old power football. And doing it with three different backs. Prim finds daylight. Wow. It's popped by Boyd at the 13, but not before he picked up close to 11 yards and another Cowboy first down. I can tell you what, Mickey, look at Jacob Prim just really find the hole and just barrel through. What really helped this Cowboy team coming off the loss to Western Kentucky? They had a week to regroup, got healthy, especially on the offensive line. Then from there, they beat Sam Houston State, they beat Northwestern State, they beat Nickel State, and they're running the football really strong. They've, they've only given up one sack in the last three weeks. They're playing very well. Coach Gerald Broussard, offensive line coach for the Cowboys, doing a great job. Prim has his forward progress stopped at the 10. Football came out of there, but the official says he is down at around the 10-yard line. Jack State fans kind of grumbling. They wanted the old turnover. That would be mighty big for JSU if they could force one here. But this play ruled down at the 10-yard line. You know what? Hats off to both these fans because these are true football fans <laughs> bearing the elements to see these teams play. Yeah, we had a very lengthy, lengthy weather delay. <laughs> and the rain is getting harder. And it's not like they're sitting out in sunshine now. <laughs> no, the bluebird is definitely not singing on their shoulder. <laughs> Second down and six. Here's the pitch to Prim. A host of Gamecock defenders will bring him down at the eight yard line. It'll set up third down. And about four. Prim just running, running straight ahead, trying to get possibly a good field goal look for either A. Barra Marino for another three points or so. See the official is trying to keep those balls dry. Virtually impossible to do because you set it down for a few seconds and the rain has it drenched before they get up to snap it. <laughs> Nagel talking to the official. Maybe they're just going to let the playcock go down and call a timeout. That's what they're going to do. Cowboys going to stop the clock with 11.41 to play in the football game. The Cowboys lead the Gamecocks 25-15. I'm Philip Tarver for Lake Charles Toyota, where we have great products at great prices backed by great people. Our great products include the all-new reinvented O2 Camry, destined to follow its heritage as the number one selling car in America four years in a row. Our great prices include O2 Corollas with air, automatic, and AM FM cassette for just $13,495. And we have 0% APR. Our great people include NADA certified Toyota trained professionals who can assist you in making the best purchase decision for your wants, needs, and budget. Great products, great prices, and great people at Lake Charles Toyota Highway 14, South of I Look, don't even ask me about convenience, all right? I mean, the place I bank's got to be convenient. I just want to know that, that somebody's going to be there to answer any question I've got. 
personal service. Personal service. Personal service. You got it? Treating you better. It's what we do best. Cameron State Bank. Personal banking at its best. taking care of the big or the little things in life at Conoco you're good to go chance to be returned one man this to beat is Spencer gone. with another interception and he's going to run this back 100 yards Reggie Spencer his third interception of the day and Jacksonville State the stadium and they are right back in this football game Nagel dropping back, looking for Luke Lawton, overthrown. Great play for the interception and the touchdown. Keeps the Gamecocks in this ball game. Gets the crowd right back into it, too. Great play. I would say send a lightning bolt through this crowd, but that wouldn't be an appropriate <laughs> term to use on a day like today. Yeah. Spencer Big, his second interception of the game. So Lee tacks on, or actually misses the extra point. So the score remains 25 to 21. Jacksonville State pulls back to within four. Actually, that was Spencer's third interception of the game, having a fantastic outing. This holiday season, give a gift the whole family will enjoy. A brand new car or truck from the Lake Area's number one volume selling dealer, Billy Navarre. Choose the all new larger Chevy Trailblazer, the best selling midsize sport utility in Lake Charles. Silverado Half Ton, our area's best selling truck. Tahoe or Suburban that outsell all full inventory clearance priced. All Cooper tires, any size, on sale. All service work on sale. Oil changes all on sale. Alignments on sale now at Pompelli Tire Center. Amazing what a little quality fuel can do. At Conoco, you're good to go. Been thinking about a set of custom wheels? Pompelli Tire Center says come on in now because they're all on sale. All Cooper tires in stock on sale. Belts, hoses, shocks, brakes all on sale. Don't miss this giant store-wide clearance sale at your Cooper Tire dealer. Pompelli Tire Center, Lake Charles and Silver. We'll give the Cowboys great field position to begin this drive. Looking at some stats through three quarters, pretty much the same. McNeese, 276 yards of total offense. JSU, 250. JSU controlling time of possession, 25-32 for 19-28 for McNeese. Well, let's see how the Cowboys can respond offensively. First and 10. This is King checking back into the game. And King, a nice gain, close to 10 yards. Let's see, they're going to spot him down, I believe, about a half yard short of his first down at the Gamecock 48-yard line. Vic King's having a field day. Through three quarters, he has 164 yards, 17 carries, 9.6 a pop. Once again, breaks outside, dances a little bit, just dives forward. Official says his knee touched down at the 48, so it'll be second and about a half yard. Here's the give to the fullback, that is Andrew Rubin. He hurdles his way to first down yardage to the Gamecock 44. So McNeese quickly back into Gamecock territory. Very entertaining football game. A lot of big plays on both sides. Credit 
both teams, the way they played coming out of that long weather delay in miserable conditions. King trying to find a hole. Well, this guy just looks like he's hemmed in behind the line of scrimmage, and you look up and he's picked up five or six yards. Think about Vic King, earlier in the season, he just didn't know the offense. He's grasped it. He's really taking control. Got to wonder back in Lake Charles if he'll be the starter next week if the Cowboys should win this game and get a playoff game at home, or regardless, on the road. Just a sophomore is King. Second down and four, JSU brings the linebackers on this play. And King is able to turn the corner for a nice game. Picks up close to four yards. He spotted down very close to first down yardage. Believe he's gonna be just a little short. King is on his way to a 200 yard game. Mm -hmm. And didn't play the first quarter. Just bounces it outside and just maintains his balance. Okay, got a bad spot that time. Gonna put him back at the 35, so it'll be third and about a yard. Big play for the Gamecock defense right here. Series the pitch to King. And he's got his first down. Cowboys keep the chains moving, keep possession of the football, and keep that clock moving. Stop momentarily while they move the chains. 8.40 to play in the game. King just swings it outside, barrels four, gets the first down. At the Gamecock 32-yard line. This has been the problem for Jacksonville State. Their offense keeps them in football games, and when they need the big stop, they have trouble defensively getting it done. They're trying to come up with one here. Ruben right up the middle. Jack State will finally stop his progress at the 26-yard line, but another big gain on first down. It'll be second five. Roban, the freshman from Port Berry, Louisiana, just barreling forward. Cowboys just mixing the tailback and the fullback right now. Nothing fancy, just straight up the middle, hard-nosed football. B.J. Sams checks in for the Cowboys. Second down and five. The pitch to King, lots of lead blockers in front of him, and Tommy Rice makes contact with him. They finally bring him down at the 18-yard line, but it'll be another first down for the Cowboys. As McNeese will have it first and 10 at the Gamecock 18-yard line. Cowboys wide receivers more or less just spreading out the field. Vic King picking the holes. Another great run. Jacksonville State came up with a big defensive play in the red zone on the series beforehand. Let's see if they can do it again. Touchdown here would be huge. It's a four-point game at the moment. King will be taken down at the 14-yard line. First man there, Russell Green, up from his defensive back position. The freshman from Birmingham set a fine game for Jacksonville State today. The wind picking back up now. At least some cold weathers behind this front we've seen move through today. Simply, simply nasty. <laughs> Second and six. Clock continues to move down near the six and a half minute mark of the fourth quarter. Everybody at the line of scrimmage for Jacksonville State. King takes it outside and made something out of nothing. Spencer had to come up and finish him off, but not before. King picked up a few yards down around the 11-yard line. Great run. Look at the patience right there. Cuts to the left. Great inside block by Jermaine Martin. Takes it down close to the 10-yard line. Third and two. Updating King's numbers now. 24 carries, 201 yards, and a touchdown. And 
and here he adds to his numbers. And he stopped just short of the goal line. It's amazing, he didn't even play the first quarter and he's got those kind of numbers. Pitt King once again finds the hole, gets outside, takes on a couple guys in the secondary and pulls his way down to the one yard line. Now the question is, he's done the dirty work, does he get to finish it off? Cowboys like to share the wealth right around the goal line, so. First and goal from the one. Now King's going to get his chance, and he gets in for the touchdown. What a great job by Vic King today. Offensive line just surges. Jacksonville State had a chance to make the play, and King just surges right in. And the weather getting nasty again. The wind whipping up, the rain coming down, and 519 left in this long, long day. Things looking good now for the Cowboys as they extend their lead again to 10 points. They could make it 11 if they connect on the extra point. Marino on to try this one. And he missed it wide left, so the score remains 31-21, 5-19 to play in the football game. Can JSU mount a comeback? We'll see in just a moment. If you think these guys play rough, think about your vehicle. Summer, spring, winter, fall, your vehicle works hard for you. Bring your car into Don's Car Wash and Quick Lube for the best treatment around. Let the team at Don's service your car inside and out. With an oil change, complete wash and wax, and a 15-point check to make sure your vehicle is in tip-top shape to handle anything that gets in the way. Don's off off car wash and quick lube. The winning team. All of us at Sitco are proud to support our McNeese Cowboys. I'm Al Prebula, and at Sitco, we understand how important teamwork is to get results. Just like the Cowboys, we excel through hard work, dedication, and safety first. Our best wishes to the McNeese Cowboys football team and head coach Tommy Tate for a safe and winning season. Sitco's proud to be a sponsor of the McNeese Cowboys. Sitco's proud of you, McNeese! Go Cowboys! Woo! Woo! Golly gee, shucks! Shazam! I'm taking this to Johnny's paint and body! Dude, it's time to just go down to Johnny's paint and body, man. I have your people call my people to call Johnny's paint and body. You've always believed in our quality service. The past five decades have proven that Johnny's hands and always will deliver. Mr. Jones, uh, your car is ready. Whoa! This kick will be picked up from the goal line by Roger Bell. And Bell gets all he can back out to the 19-yard line. Number nine, Hadley Prince takes him down. The junior out of Sulphur, Louisiana. Actually, they spot it back at the 14-yard line. So Bell, a tough kick to handle. 14-yard return, first and 10 for the Gamecocks. And what do you do here with Jacksonville State? You're down by 10, only five minutes left. You try to throw the football, you're going to be throwing into a torrential downpour. <laughs> yeah, the monsoon is back. Mother Nature's definitely didn't shine on Jacksonville State today. Well, Reggie's in the shotgun. Pressure coming at him. Goes to Bowie, and Bowie can't hold on at the 30-yard line. The hit Joe by Judge. Joe Judge jarred that football loose. Joe Judge laying down some serious law. Just waiting with a serious smack. That's about the only ball Bowie's dropped today. He's played very well today. It took a torrential downpour and a big lick from the judge to get Quincy Bowie to drop one today. Not a bad day for the guy from Aniston. Second and ten. Here comes the blitz again. Jack State picks it up. And 
And the pass a little bit behind Lorenzo Banks, the intended receiver. A dangerous throw by Stancil that time. Sean Williams almost came up with the interception. Sean Williams having a nice day at the corner possession position. So it'll be third and ten. Clock stopped, 4.56 to play in the game. Four receivers. Stancil throws it over the middle. Will Wagnon's got it. And he's got the first down at the 27-yard line, taken down by LeBrandon Shepard. And there's the possession receiver for JSU, Will Wagnon. Stancil dropping back. Just a nice, nice toss. Good pitch and catch. Wagnon sure-handed even in these conditions. And the wind is blowing right into the face of JSU from their position on the field. Very, very tough spot. First and ten. Here comes the blitz. Stancil gets his pass away way over the head of Bowie, the intended receiver, out at the 40-yard line. Stancil on a heavy rush just throws it away. Clock becoming a factor now. 427 left. Second down and 10 from the 26. <laughs> Stancil with time again. No, going for Wagnon and just a little bit too high. Wagnon was open at the 35-yard line. And give the JSU offensive line some credit. They're picking up some big blitzes. McNeese is throwing at him here on this possession. Cowboys smelling blood, bringing pressure. Stancil sitting in the pocket, delivering. Now big third down for the Gamecocks. Now they converted on third and ten a moment ago. It was Will Wagnon on the catch. Let's see what they do here. Wagnon not in the game on this play. Third and ten from the 26. Here comes the corner blitz. Stancil in trouble, just has to throw it up for grabs. Lorenzo Banks uh -huh. makes the grab at midfield, making an outstanding adjustment. And JSU gets a break there, and they get a first down at the 50-yard line. The Gamecocks just will not die. Great catch. Stancil under a heavy rush. Great athleticism, just throws it up, and Banks just a diving catch. Great play. Well, it's appropriate that we see a duck here in these conditions. A duck thrown that time by Stancil. Under heavy pressure. And it's not the Aflac duck either. <laughs> here comes the blitz again. Stancil loses the football. I think he got it back at his 45-yard line. Almost broke away from the rush up the middle. Loses the football. He's going to talk it over. JSU calls timeout with 3.41 to play in the game. The Gamecocks trailing by 10. Back in a moment. When was the last time you got your oil changed in 10 minutes or less? Welcome to Quick Car. How can we help you today? Yes, yeah, so I'd like to get an oil change, please. Why don't you go inside and have a seat and help yourself to some free cappuccino or fountain drink? Excuse me, ma'am. Your car is ready. Oh, right. Thank you. I haven't even had a chance to finish my cappuccino. Quick Car. Changing your mind about the way you change oil.
Philip Tarver for Lake Charles Toyota, where we have great products at great prices backed by great people. Our great products include a great lineup of SUVs, from the full-size Sequoia to the popular new Highlander to the rugged 4Runner. Our great prices include full-size Tundra, two-wheel drive V8 four-door automatic, just $22,900, and we have 0% APR available. Our great people include NADA certified Toyota trained professionals who can assist you in making the best purchase decision for your wants, needs, and budget. Great products, great prices, and great people at Lake Charles Toyota Highway 14, south of I-210. Third and 15. Wagnon coming into the game, Poe checking out. Reggie fields a low snap. Fires over the middle, almost intercepted. Joe Judge had it in his hands at the 35-yard line. Falls incomplete. It'll be fourth and 15. Stancil's got a gun, just couldn't make the connection with Bowie. Judge had the pick. Right in his hands, just could not grasp it. Fourth down now for the Gamecocks, and this is pretty much the ball game right here. Got to convert. Gamecocks do have a couple of timeouts left, but only 3.30 to play in the fourth and 15. The rain coming down heavy. <laughs> here comes the pressure. Stancil will go far down the field, and Judge will intercept this one at the 15-yard line. Essentially the same as a long punt. Why not go for it? The JSU offense will have to come off the field. McNeese will come back out with a chance to run out the clock. Stancil under, once again, a big rush. Just throws it up. Joe Judge, the senior, comes up with his second interception. And the Cowboys will just work on running the clock down and picking up a league title win. They're their first since 1997. First down at their 16-yard line. And this is Prim, I believe. Tripped up, falls forward to the 19-yard line. See if the Gamecocks use their timeouts. They haven't stopped it yet. Second down and eight. Cowboys will just let the play clock run down all the way. If they get one first down, that probably will be enough. Second and eight. And the fullback gets the call and gets about a yard or two to the 20-yard line. It'll be third and six coming up for the Cowboys. By the time they snap it again, it'll take us under two minutes to play in the game. Second down, and I should say third and eight coming up. Once again, JSU with two timeouts left. And all the, the only thing the Cowboys want to do here is let the cock run, run the football, down to two minutes. Here is the pitch to Prim. Cannot turn the corner. Stop short of the 25. It'll be fourth and about two. And McNeese will have to send on the punting unit with 144 and counting to play in the game. So they could not get the first down. JSU, it looks as though they'll get one more shot at it offensively, but they do trail by 10. And the Gamecocks need a big return from Quincy Bowie right now. 
Latta in to punt the football, something he hasn't had to do since the first quarter. High snap, big rush. Latta does a good job getting that out of there. And it will roll dead just inside the 40-yard line at the 39. And JSU will take back over first and 10 at their own 39 with 57 seconds to play in this marathon football game. Great play by Alada. High snap, gets it, loose ball and everything. Gets the kickoff. Now the Cowboys can seal it on defense, which has been their pride and joy all season long. Well, Jack State's only hope is a long, quick scoring strike and an onside kick. Do have a couple of timeouts left. Reggie in the shotgun as the Gamecocks will take their shot. McNeese comes after him. Reggie eludes one defender, gets his pass away, and almost intercepted. Sean Williams had a shot at it at the 39-yard line. Cowboys secondary just sitting back, and Stancil avoids. He's such a great athlete, steps up in the pocket, and Williams almost comes up with the interception. Rarely does the first man get Reggie to the ground. Like McNeese's strategy here defensively, they're not just sitting back with five or six defenders. They're going after him here. Cowboys are all about pressure. They don't play prevent defenses. They, they bring pressure at all times. Oh, Sims with a nice play defensively on Smith, I should say, on Bowie at the 20-yard line. As we get another look at the play. Keith Smith with some great coverage downfield. Tight contact. Refs letting him play out. He's right there. Bats the ball away. You can't put your hand on his shoulder. So third and ten. <laughs> and I think the fans were not happy with the call. <laughs> the fans on this side. Third and ten. 44 seconds left in the game. Back to throw again. Stancil fires, and Bowie can't hold on at the 50-yard line. Takes a shot Brad Archie. from Brad Archie, and JSU wanting a late hit. But they're not going to get it. Mr. Archie says hello. Very late. Fourth and ten. And Mickey, even though the Gamecocks look like they're going to lose this game, next year they return a lot of good players. They'll have a strong squad returning. 15 seniors playing their final game here at Paul Snow Stadium. They have been through a lot. Through the Mike Williams era here at JSU, and now Coach Crow the last couple of years, Reggie Stancil sacked back at the 25, and that's your exclamation point on this football game for the Cowboys. Jimmy Abram, the senior. They bring all kinds of pressure. Abram, simply relentless, just takes him down. The Cowboys are celebrating their first league title since 1997. The drought is over, and they've had to earn it. They've had to beat on the way, Sam Houston State, Northwestern State, Nichols State on the road, and a very explosive Jacksonville State team here today. 32 seconds to play. Snap at one time, unless JSU uses their timeouts. And a flag. I think we could keep that one in our pocket, guys. <laughs> First snap, substitution violation substitution on Jacksonville. Violation. They had 12 men on the field, five-yard penalty, Maine's first down. And the JSU fans are quite perturbed with the referees at this moment.
Throw in the rain, the rain delay, their team losing. Not a happy day at the old ballpark. Nagel goes to a knee, and that should do it. And it will. JSU will not use one of their two remaining timeouts. This one is history. The Cowboys have come on the road, fought through a lengthy weather delay, come back out on the field, and they've defeated the Jack State Gamecocks 31-21. to Coach Crow and Coach Tate, there you see them at the middle of the field. Congratulations to McNeese State winning the 2001 SFL title and an automatic bid to the 1AA playoffs. We'll take a break, come back with some post-game comments in just a moment. Golly gee, shucks. Shazam! I'm taking this to Johnny's paint and body. Dude, it's time to just go down to Johnny's paint and body, man. <laughs> Have your people call my people to call Johnny's Paint and Body. You've always believed in our quality service. The past five decades have proven that Johnny's hands and always will deliver. Mr. Jones, uh, your car is ready. Whoa! Excuse me, can you take Timmy to tuba practice? No problem. Hey, Mr. Uh, Battle of Gettysburg? No problem. Can you take me to the track, please? No problem. <laughs> Dodge Caravan. It offers an exclusive power rear hatch hey, my pony. and 972 seating configurations. Now get 7 year or 100,000 mile powertrain protection and 0% APR on 2002 Dodge Caravan. All of us at Sitco are proud to support our McNeese Cowboys. I'm Al Prebula and at Sitco we understand how important teamwork is to get results. Just like the Cowboys, we excel through hard work, dedication and safety first. Our best wishes to the McNeese Cowboys football team and head coach Tommy Tate for a safe and winning season. Sitco's proud to be a sponsor of the McNeese Cowboys. Sitco's proud of you, McNeese! Go this holiday season, give a gift the whole family will enjoy. A brand new car or truck from the Lake Area's number one volume selling dealer, Billy Navar. Choose the all new larger Chevy Trailblazer, the best selling midsize sport utility in Lake Charles. Silverado Half Ton, our area's best selling truck. Tahoe or Suburban that outsell all full size sport utilities in the Lake Area. This holiday season, give your family a gift they'll remember for a lifetime. And get Chevy's gift of 0% financing on every car and truck extended through the end of the year. Shop Billy Navar Chevrolet in Lake Charles or Sulphur. Folks, can you buy cheaper betting? Yes! Can you buy more expensive betting? Yes! But can you buy quality name brand betting from anyone but Home Furniture and sleep completely free for the next year? No! That's right, folks. When you shop Home Furniture right now, you can pick out all the new betting you need for yourself, for the kids, for your guests, and get it all with no down payment, no interest, no monthly payments to write for the next 12 months. From $44 inner spring mattresses to top-of-the-line pillow top sets, get all your betting sale priced right now at Home Furniture, free for a year. Your home team, KVHP, Fox 29 News. Well, there you see uh, the celebration for the McNeese State Cowboys taking advantage of the field conditions. And uh, <laughs> nobody's going to go away from here dry tonight, I can tell you that. No, I'm still wet from uh, our halftime festivities and earlier sliding down a hill. Great victory for McNeese State the end of the title drought. Everyone's celebrating, and now they can focus in on a possible home playoff game and a league title underneath their belts. Tommy Tate's staff has really done a good job. When they lost to SFA to start conference play, nobody gave them a chance. Cowboys came together, an incredible stretch run, four wins, two at home, two on the road, and if you're going to win a league title, to win it on the road is very impressive. All right, that'll wrap it up for our telecast here from Paul Snow Stadium. Once again, your final score, uh, McNeese State defeats JSU 31-21. to For uh, Joe Paquino, Mickey Shadricks, and our entire crew, thanks for watching. So long. Golly gee, shucks. Shazam! I'm taking this to Johnny's paint and body. Dude, it's time to just go down to Johnny's paint and body, man. <laughs> Have your people call my people to call Johnny's paint and body. You've always believed in our quality service. The past five decades have proven that Johnny's hands and always will deliver. Mr. Jones, uh, your car is ready. Whoa! Your home team. 
KVHB, Box 29 News. Spot top. He's going to the X, Cecil. You're over there on the O. Whichever player survives goes on to our playoff round. We'll have a chance to play for $1 million if they win the playoff round. Good luck to you guys. Brainiac, spring your trap. Congratulations to... Nebraska! Tom, congratulations to you. All right, why don't you stay right over there for me just a moment. You know what, Cecil? We'll see you a little later on. We hope maybe you'll, you'll still have a chance in our playoff round. Thank you very much. Okay, we've got two players. We're going to pick the third one in just a moment. And then one of those three players will have a chance for a million dollars. We'll be back with our playoffs. Don't go away. It's a new kind of lottery game. And it's coming down. Roll down. While castaways are eating for their money, you can be sitting at home shaking the lottery ball by its ankles every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday nights. Roll down the perfect lottery game. Forget the safety net. This jackpot's coming down. With jackpots expected as high as $100,000. No jackpot winner. No problem. Because the jackpot is shared by those who match two numbers or more. Roll down on sale now. Get more local news at 5 and 9 from Kerry Anderson and the Fox 29 News Team. More local news on First at 5 and News at 9. Your home team, KVHB, Fox 29 News. Fox 29 Sports.